Welcome to yet another live stream of the large, of the Hard Rock Show. I'm Andrew. I'm Dave. I'm Jade. I'm, I'm Conrad. I'm Jeff. I'm Bill. <laughs> and Jeff's playing and Jeff's Black. Uh, Murder in the Dark. That's what Jeff's mm-hmm. playing right now. I think he's going to murder his gear tonight. He's having a lot of trouble connecting, but we'll see how it all shakes out. Um, we're here. Dave has a special guest with him. His daughter Jade has, has decided to join us for the first time on a live stream, which we'll get to that very, very shortly. So everyone say hi, get in the comments, and say hello to Jade in particular. Um, <laughs> well, tonight we have a lot to get through, as always. Our King of the Rift battle this time around is it's round six of our uh, Nordic band series. And this time we have Twilight, Twilight of the Thunder God from Amon Amath going up against Death Cult Armageddon from Dimmu Borgir. Um our songs of the week, which we'll get to in just a moment. Uh, we have, I think, if everything goes to plan, Conrad, did you have another a game of Who Am I Ready to Go? Yep. So we are set up on that front. Uh, we have the bin and everything else coming up as well later on. So make sure you stick around. There's a lot to get through. If you're joining us live, then awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And it's good to have your company. If you're tuning in later on, then we just appreciate your company just as much. Feel free to give us your comments wherever and whenever you can. Um, we have links for reference tracks all through the description box of this one. I'm going to put them in the chat as we go through tonight. But yeah, there's reference tracks and everything. So make sure you hit those ones as we go through and check them out and give us your thoughts. Uh, do the same thing for us. Find us on the preferred social media platform. We are on pretty much everything just at the Hard Rock Show. So just find us, follow us, keep up to date with all we're doing, including the stuff on TV every week as well. And yeah, a big thank you to our fantastic sponsors in Squidding, Scrimping, Alt, Cult, and Rockstar Finance. There's a link for them as well. So give them a like, give them a follow. That'd be greatly appreciated too. We've got a few people jumping in early tonight, which is fantastic. I don't know what. What's going on with Jeff's screen? We've got a black screen for Jeff, but hopefully we've got audio yeah, at least. There we go. I just uh, muted myself. Well, sorry. <laughs> we can hear. On the visual mute. Well, I'm not hearing me. Yeah, video mute. Yeah, video I mute. I invented a new thing called video mute. <laughs> 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 all right, well, let's get to some comments here quickly. We've got Andrew here saying hello. All good to see you, buddy. Same with Michael. Good to see you again as well. Same with Rowan. Awesome. Oh, Chris is straight back at you, buddy. Hopefully you're having a great night out there. Uh, Michael says, Dave is not allowed on with that supervision now. Probably a good that idea. That is right? true. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joel has gone, hi, Jade. Andrew Jr. Well, it's Dave Jr. in this context. Um, hey, that's weird. Oh, yeah, that is weird. Uh, Sally, oh. what's going on? Metal people, a special guest today. <laughs> Nicole, evening all. Hopefully you had fun going past the Kin Kin bypass the other day. Uh, what have you got? <laughs> Steven's gone, have you played Nemophila yet? Not yet. We are getting up to those things, unfortunately. It does take time. Uh, Vinny says, hey, everyone. She's gorgeous, Dave. I have an 11-year-old stepson. We can set them up. <laughs> oh, we, oh, man, we can be related, dude. That's wow. all we need. We can sit around two. doing dad jokes. Oh, It'd be fantastic. Brothers-in-law. You wow. two yeah. having no. that and then the grandchildren out of that union. Oh, my goodness. I don't think the world is prepared for that, Dave. Um, and <laughs> um, <laughs> Ellie's here saying hello all. Jay's going, what the fuck's going on? And uh, Michael saying nice shirt, Jeff. So there we go. <laughs> Thanks. Vinny's all for it. So here we go. This is going to be a dangerous night tonight. Hey, Vinny. Vinny, tell us how your first day at work went. I'm oh, yeah. sending... Good wishes your way on yeah. Tuesday morning. Yeah. Hope it's going well for you. Yeah, hopefully the change of scenery is good for you, Vinny. Uh, Darren's here saying, hey, yo, good to see you. Hey, yo. Uh, says, Hi, everyone. Hope everyone's well. Hubby and I got COVID, which sucks. Oh, my my antivirals uh, are probably uh, extremely worth it. Oh, man. Oh, it's okay. Um, poor Jolly. Hopefully, that's all right. No, that's take fine. Take care, guys. Better good. soon. Not a problem. Hopefully, you both feel much better soon because that's yeah, yeah. not good at all. So, feel better. Sucks. Um, keep us right. posted. And if there's anything we can do to help out, then yeah, please let us know. Um, Michael says, but upstage by Double Battle Jackets. That is with Dave and Jade. <laughs> yeah, double Battle awesome. Jacket thing there. Um, all righty. We have like got a lot to get through as <laughs> always. We'll do the round shortly, but we do have a guest here. So, let's get on to. The reason for Jade being here sooner rather than later, so we can get the young one off the bed oh, and yeah. get on with our usual antics before Dave starts falling off the chair and taking his daughter with him. Um, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> he's on the cards. If we stay, if we take too long to do this one, alrighty. So, 
first up, we're going to just launch straight into things tonight. So make sure you uh, keep coming on and saying hi. And um, <laughs> we go. And uh, Rowan's gone, dang, Jolly. And Jolly's going, you rock, Jade. So there we go. You're getting a lot, of, a lot of love for Jade here. This is awesome. But the reason for Jade being here is to talk about a particular song, which ends up being Dave's pick of the week this week. So um, in the comments, in the description box, you know what to do, people, by now. Hit the comments and check it out. There is a track called Main Skin, Honey, Are You Coming? Now, this is going to be interesting because this is Jade's choice of the week, actually. So I just want to do the rounds and, and see how this one goes. Now, Dave, I'm going to give you a choice on this one. Do you want to go first with Jade or you want to wait for everyone else's feedback and then go last? Mm. What do you want? Do you want to go first? And what should we do? Do you want to go first? Mm. I'll go first and you go, okay? Okay. Cool. Okay. All right, over to you. <laughs> Worked it out. So, Main Skin, are you coming? Now, for those who don't know, are you coming? Honey, honey are you coming? You just correct honey, me. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to need you all the time because I make a lot of mistakes on this show. So you can just sit there and you know, correct my spelling and my homework. Instead and of Julia correcting my homework, mind. Jade's going to do it now. Oh, God. Okay. Honey, are you coming? As I've been corrected. Now, for those who don't know, I'm a big Main Skin fan and so is my daughter. This is one that we drive your mum crazy with by playing the songs over and over. This is a really awesome. fun song, instantly catchy. It's not complicated and it doesn't have to be. The individual parts, guitar, bass, drums, and vocals are all pretty basic, but when you bring them together, they create this awesome sound. And not every band has to be Dream Theater. Yes, I just said that. Wow. Now, uh, <laughs> we would both love to see this band live, and unfortunately, they sold out every show in Australia. This band is huge. Mm. There is a cool melodic guitar line, which is really fun to play along with. Lyrics tell a fun story. Um, like a lot of their songs, the singer paints himself as God's gift, but he's obviously a bit flawed. They play on that in their music videos as well. Um, <clears throat> nice use of dropping part of the riff as the vocals go and and then the vocals go solo and then the riff punches back in. Um, this wouldn't sound like it belongs on the Rush album they released earlier this year. Already they're mm. moving forward and progressing in their sound. It's cool right. that rock and roll gets to be fun again. It started taking itself way too seriously. Yeah, There's a lot of aging hipsters and a few music sites on facebook that don't like this band but what do they know they're irrelevant now rock and roll is alive and well in 2023 and i love what this band is doing Ready? wow i think we're okay. a part of that dinosaur brigade dave so be mindful <laughs> yeah we're a bit more Holy open-minded crap. than a lot of the other people out there like oh this band got... you good oh. okay up you go see you got this this is an upbeat song and it's fun um I feel bad for the guy because I don't think his girlfriend's coming, which is why he's saying, honey, are you coming? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> again. Oh, yeah, that's fine. There's great bass. It makes me feel happy. Awesome. Um, this song rocks. You can dance to the song even if you don't want to dance. You can groove along. Mm -hmm. You saw nothing. Saw nothing. Like the <laughs> <laughs> you were. No, I was. There's going to be footage of that kicking around. There has been footage of that kicking around. <laughs> Julia, if you're watching and you got footage, I want it. <laughs> um, um, his voice is good, but with the voice sounds a bit strange at, at the start. Uh, All right, guys, the drum sound. Right the same to all of the, the other songs which is good because if you are new to the band you can know what the other songs sound like awesome that's really smart observation that's great mm -hmm. anything else uh, i like main skin because they are a fun band and they are a great they're great songs to dance to that's yeah fun. that is amazing yeah. great job awesome is there anything Excellent. else you want to say there jade that's uh, it yeah. Cool. Thank you. All right. Well, well I, I do have something, but just beforehand, <laughs> I believe that you've been playing drums to this song. Is that correct? It was Mamma Mia, actually. Yeah. Oh, Mamma Mia, was it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but do you, what's what's your favorite part of this song? Is it the drums or the bass, the guitar, the the singing? What's the part uh, that really gets your attention the most? The singing. Awesome. Cool. Mm -hmm got a great hook in it I tell you what it's got a great great hook in it mm -hmm. all right 
So everyone in the comments, give us all a big, you know, digital round of applause for Jade because that was phenomenal. That's the first. Like she's jumped on the TV stuff before. Doing yeah, live that was awesome. Different. You've done That's very fun. well, Jumps. All right. So you did a great, great job, Jade. Well done. You should be very proud of yourself. And Dave, you should be proud as well because you raised oh, yeah. one yeah. little kid there. So you're yeah. doing a great job, man. You and Julia both. Great future. Yeah. Brilliant. Great future. Better than your dad's review, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> to be fair, she'll probably outshine all of us tonight. But on that note, we yeah. have to do the rounds on it. So let's see. Uh, let's go to Jeff next. Over to you, Jeff. What did you think of the main skin track? Uh, well, I, I really liked it actually, uh, and I did a little research on these guys. So you know, it's it, it's it looks like it's main skin, but it's actually pronounced, as I found out, it's pronounced monoskin. Yeah, that's Italian. It, yeah, it, it it's, means it's, moonlight. It's, it's actually not. It it it's it's actually um it's not Italian. Okay. It, it's it's, a, it's better Italian, but the they took the name from it's a Danish name, a Danish word yeah. for moonlight. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's I what I read, and uh, I could be wrong, but uh, look, I really like this, and um, I thought the song had a very infectious rhythm uh, and a really great groove. Um, the guitar was excellent, and um, uh, it, I felt, though, um, it was kind of understated in the mix, right? Yeah. Like, it's just there. It's, it's, it's very complementary to the overall groove. Uh, laid down by the bass, and I think the bass in this thing really yeah. shines. I think the I bass. Think, yeah, I think she's a star in this band. To be honest, I think she's mm. right up. There. She's, she definitely is, uh, absolutely. And um, she kept it all growing. I think she's the one that actually keeps the energy and everything going forward. Um, and the vocals are really good. You know what? Now you guys might laugh, but the vocals here reminded me of something, and I had to think. Who's this reminding me of? And it actually reminds me a lot of Robbie Williams. Okay. Actually, there's a bit in that, I reckon. Yeah, yeah there oh, is. Wow. Uh, I actually put on some Robbie Williams afterwards just to think that I wasn't crazy. Yeah, and yeah. I, you can hear it. You can really hear it. No, you're um, crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> wow. He's going to pull his ears off his head. <laughs> yeah. Robbie Williams, like, I like to hate the guy. He can sing. I mean, he's a good singer. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not necessarily a big fan of his music, music but some of that's good. Mm. Um, but look, I, I thought that the vocals, uh, the way it's sung, adds a lot of room for the music to fill in the spaces. Mm. Um, and, and it gives the song a feel that is quite unusual in this genre. I really like this song. And you know how, you know, we don't always rate, and sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Mm. I actually gave this 10 out of 10. I thought it was wow. that good. Nice. Wow. So, so thank you, Jake. Yeah. Great song. We are starting yeah. off with a bang this week. We are coming yeah. in hot. Yeah. So let's see if this continues. Now, remember, we have to be, all be honest. That's the main rule here. So, Bell, we're going to go to you next. <laughs> okay. All right. There are very few songs that get reviewed on this show that make me want to get up and dance. And I'm personally trying to alter that but not deliberately at least not until that <laughs> thought came to mind but i have been trying so, You've added some so to this, right? i yeah so but this week dave and jade are bringing the dance party to me so thank you guys this is an brilliant. awesome fun yeah. catchy song um it's completely infectious, like you said jeff and has been stuck in my head so many times <laughs> since it came out Music is boppy, but it has a rock edge to it as well. Uh, the lyrics fascinate me, and I think they can be enjoyed on a few levels, which mm -hmm. is clever. Gives the song mm -hmm. a broader audience, um, sort of like The Simpsons. Um, the singer can do some really interesting things with his voice. He has lots of personality um, yeah. in this song, but in their other songs as well. I think they're a super cool band. Uh, their album Rush was released in January this year and it's great and well worth a listen if you like this song. So, yeah, well yeah, done. Right. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Well, that's two so far. Now, I swear, the, we were talking about White Christmas for, before Conrad. 
I might buy you a Grinch outfit, like just for shits oh. and giggles. Like, oh be- no, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. How did how did you go with this one? I didn't, I didn't get oh. it. I didn't yeah. get. Oh. I, it didn't connect. It, it, I couldn't connect with it. It just. I just didn't get it. It. Look, I. I've got Muse vibes and and placebo oh, yeah. vibes, which yeah, Muse, you know, Muse, Muse and a bit of placebo in there. Not the worst thing in the. I mean, I, I quite like Muse actually, but this this mm. didn't connect with me. Didn't resonate. I don't know. It just couldn't. It. It didn't. It didn't flick my switch. I'm sorry. Um, but you know, I'm. Maybe a music Nazi. So there you are. <laughs> I don't know. Music um, snob. Remember, remember I'm a music, music snob. snob. Yes. You don't like snob. fun. Yeah. I do like fun. I do like fun. Um, <laughs> I just it just didn't connect. With me. I don't resonate with me. Look, I give this four out of ten. I'm sorry. Sorry, oh, Jade. Sorry. Apologies. <laughs> but but you know, don't take it personally, girl. Some of my songs, you'll probably you'll probably laugh at my song. So there you are. Oh, we'll get to your song later, dude. You can trash my song <laughs> later, Jerry. <laughs> trash um, my song later. Well, I'll close the circle uh, on this one. Um, it is the latest single from the band. There's no word on an album or anything yet. It's just the latest single from the guys. But I get they, that there are... I'm sorry? Are these Italian? Sorry, are these yes, Italian? They're Italian. They're, yep. they're Italian. They're the from Italy. Italian and the bass player is Danish. Don't know about oh. the other two. Yep. So where are they actually from? Are they domestic? Are they Australian? No, um, no. I think they're based in Italy. Yeah, yeah. they're based in Italy. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. but I know this band can be divisive. Like a lot of people struggle and don't get it, don't like it, whatever else, and that's okay too. But they seem to split. You know, it's either a love thing or a hate thing. They don't really have much middle ground on them. Mm. But you know. There's something undeniable because love them or hate them, you will definitely have your attention grabbed by them in some way, shape, or form. Be it negative or positive, you'll that will get your yeah. attention. Um, mm. There's great energy in this song, an even better hook in it. Uh, and this song, as Bell and others have mentioned, will get stuck in your head right bloody quick. As with everything these guys do, there's loads of attitude, and I like the lyrical content because there is more than one way to listen to this song lyrically, and it, it's quite entertaining to be able to have that <laughs> layering going on there. And there's, but I, what I found really cool at this track in particular was the, um, which is different, I guess, a bit for these guys, was the clever um, little subtle harmonies and the use of space in this song. I thought that was cool. It's, it's not a complicated piece of music, but there's some great layering going on here that really allows it to build up toward the end of the song really nicely. They use space well. They they just know how to write really good, catchy, infectious, energetic songs. It's an upbeat, fun song. These guys, you know, they do cut through, and I've got a note here that they cut through to the younger generation, which is one of those things where, even if you don't like the band or what they do, I think it's great to have a band somewhere that's connecting with the youth in a, in a way that is connecting with Jade, for example, here tonight, to have a band like that that's contemporary for them bringing back quote-unquote guitar music because you can't say that it's not guitar music. This is not electronic or anything like this. This is full-blown, mm-hmm. yep. uh, four people playing the instruments live. Um, and they sold out every show in Australia and they just sold out yeah. Madison Square Gardens. Wow. What? And that's- that's huge. I've never, heard, I've never heard of them. Well, <laughs> now you have. Who <laughs> had one Eurovision a couple of years ago? Yeah. Never heard of them. Yeah. Wow. wow. But this is the thing. like, And that's what's cool about this band is because we've got a band that's actually able to connect doing things like this and and get through to a younger generation and sell out arenas. And so people, you know, like Gene Simmons, quote, unquote, that say, you know, rock is dead or dying. Bands like this, yeah. even though it's not quite their world, they are keeping it well and truly alive. And I, I think that's damn cool. It's hard to do and they're doing it well. Um, especially with how many older legacy bands are cancelling tours and that at the moment, to have a band like this that's doing what they're doing and selling out things like Madison Square Garden mm-hmm. kind of shows you where things are moving in that regard. Um, I like this track. I like it a lot. I, I think that, you know, if you like catchy, energetic, upbeat rock, this is going to be something that's going to you know, get your attention. It does. It's one of those things where it underlies the sharper cut in some of the lyrics here, which is really, really cool. On a side note to this song, it's very, very clever how they used when they filmed the live stream, when they, you know, performed it live a couple of hours before they officially released the track, Dave, that you sent me, they've repurposed yeah. a bit of that footage into the official music video. Yeah. And that's really clever. And I think it's um, a sign of how intelligent they are behind the scenes in general, but 
It's also more of a sign of things to come with bands premiering things via a live stream, repurposing the footage to to be used in an actual official video clip with the with the studio audio and that kind of stuff. And I think longer term down the line, this will be where I told you before of my theory anyway, is that touring will switch. It'll become bands will stay more localized and people will go to see when they're going on holiday or whatever else. They'll plan their travel to go and see certain things versus bands having to tour long term all over the place. I think that's where things will end up shifting. But I could be wrong, but that's how I think things will go eventually down the line. But like, this a, is just like, a, like a Vegas residency. Exactly, yeah. Bands yeah, will yeah. choose what to play for a while and then mm. become like a home base and the X Man of shows and then, you know, people like Elvis can, did, yeah. Yeah, Elvis I think did, that's yeah. a smarter way in the future. But I'll see how it plays out. But I think over the next you know, five years or so, that's what I think will shift happening-wise with all the cancellations we see and how hard it is logistically to organise a band to tour saying we're going to be here at this time and people can make a decision to come or go and they can play smaller venues but have a great vibe. It's a longer conversation in general, but I just think there's a shift there happening. And this sort of stuff that Maine's going to have done with this has been a very cool sort of little sneak peek, I think, of what could be the future in general yeah. for shows like um, this. You get it at the Albert Hall. I used to work yep. at the Albert Hall and, and you'd, yep. often have, you'd often have people. Well, there was only two that could do it, really, but you'd have yeah. Clapton and... Clapton or, or Cliff Richard, but they do mm. a month of shows. They do a yeah. solid month full of shows. Yeah. They'll be in for, for at yeah. least a month. Yeah. And so you could, go and see, yeah. you could go and see those bands at, for, for at least a month. They were playing yeah. every night. Every well, night. And be sold out every night too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. doesn't have to be like, yeah. you know, 10,000 strong. Do it for like, you know, a, uh, anywhere from three to 5,000. Do one a week for a month. And I reckon you could pack yeah. that pretty well if you're a halfway decent band so we'll see what happens but that's just a theory but i think that what what mainskin did here i think they did a very clever job with that one so i'm, I'm very curious to see how things will play out there let's get to the audience we've got some audience comments with this one as always though. i'd be interested um, to hear what the audience have to say i'm actually. curious as well we're gonna catch yeah. up though Vinny says thanks bell so far so good i've been doing really well i've uh, been hauling ass while the rest of them are talking about dinner and what plans they have for their days working from home they're not ready for thrs Vinny. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Six I'm months, sure Vinny. Vinny. Then, yep. then launch Vinny. Yeah. Yeah. All right. From Vinny again. Jade, we we honestly love your dad. You do have an ace dad. I'm happy to be adopted or become Uncle Vinny. I'll send my resume through. So <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, man. Um, but he's gone. Can't wait to hear Conroe's thoughts on her song choice. Be nice, mate. <laughs> uh, I know. Yeah, he I, know. Uh, I know. I know. We've got to be uh, nice to be honest. Another Jeff. Jeff is doing two screens at the oh, same wow. time. Wow, that's right. freaky! Wow. Hang on. Stop, Jeff. Jeff. Stop no. it! We have Jeffception. Which I can't deal with this shit, oh. man. No. All right, I can't can handle you it. Mute, can you mute the original, Andrew? Yes. Uh, my head's going to explode. <laughs> Stop it! I'm freaking out. It's not out coming here. through. Your audio is still knackered, Jeff. It's too weird. <laughs> this is this is the this dude. Is just what, what, roll with what you got, man. It's almost yeah, ten o'clock. It'll be fine. All right, <laughs> I'm take the other one out because <laughs> everyone's getting confused. Um, all right, what do we got here? So Chris said, "Rock on, Jade." Already a hundred times more professional and rock solid than your dad. So there we go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's better than my replacement. Great work, Jade. Um, Michael said, "Sorry, Dave. Better review goes to Jade." He does. Um, Vinny says, awesome work, Jade. Why can't my stepson be as cool as her? <laughs> oh, <laughs> doesn't see that wow. coming. Wow, well, on the couch tonight. Yeah, that would be trouble. <laughs> um, Charlie says, that's cool, Jade. Yeah, I hope your better half doesn't say that either, mate. You could be in a world of, world of trouble. Um, <laughs> yeah. What do we got here? Nicole says, awesome, Jade. So more love for that. Sally says, well done, Jade. Good review, babe. Uh, Darren says, Jade is better at this than Dave. Awesome. <laughs> Dave, is your ego ready for the pounding you're about to take? Uh, BC, yeah. good to see you. Thanks for jumping in. He's going, great effort, young lady. Uh, Rowan says, you're raising a great kid there, Jade. Uh, and as Jeff colored his hair, and he's wearing a hat. Which parent blood does Jeff have hair? I don't know. He used to. Um, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Um, yeah, uh, I woke up one morning and said, God, I don't know what the fuck it happened. Oh. <laughs> that that's that's a wild party, Jeff. Um, I, that might have been years ago. I saw my wife naked, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Hair gone, dude. Seriously, wow. 
Okay. And, um, um, I'm going to move on. Chris says the, the song had like a Franz Ferdinand and maybe even Panic at the Disco vibe to my ears. They're a good comparison to actually Chris. Nice choices there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do we got here? Julia. Julia's here. Great job, Jade. Very proud mum here. You rocked it. There we go. So there's your mum jumping into the comments. Well done. Julia, you should be very proud. You've done a great job. You like should be very proud. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very, very proud. Um, here we go. Chris says, I want to say Bell dance to a white snake in flames mashup. Um <laughs> I'd, well, I'd, if you can create one, I'll dance to it. I'd, I'd listen to that. That'd be interesting. Be very careful, <laughs> Bell, because the AI world oh, is very oh, good. No, now. no, it has to be organic. <laughs> no AI. No AI. <laughs> no okay. cheating. Um, man, family, good to see you. Evening, all good hey, to join us. And Sonia's here too, saying hi, all just tuned in. Hi, Jade. Missed your review, but watch it later on. I'm sure you did a great, young lady. No doubt, better than your dad. So there we go. We're getting a recurring theme break. <laughs> I'll take it, but everyone's saying the same thing. <laughs> Vinny says, Jade, you have my that's permission to kick Conrad in the potatoes. Well, that's a long kick from yep, mine oh, too. to the UK. Ouch. Mm. See? You drink like your dad. Julia's got her peg here. What are you drinking, Jade? Ginger beer. That is exactly what it is. So yeah. there we go. Um, um, but back on. Sorry? As they, yeah. as they say, never, 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 in show business, never work with children or animals because you'll always be upset. We work with both, man. <laughs> guess what? I'm screwed on both fronts, so it all works out yeah. well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Who's the um, animal here? Always be upstage. I'll, I'll get one of the dogs in. That'll that'll upstage all of us. Don't <laughs> That's why Fred was such an icon for so long. Um, yeah, I miss Fred. Yeah, I miss Fred too. Uh, Stephen says thanks for being bandmate the other week, but they have a uh, but they have a singer, so it'd be great to see a song with her in it. Um, okay, yeah, we did play one there was by request. I forget which one, but yeah, it was an instrumental one, but it was by request we played that one. It was a particular request that came through, but I'm glad you enjoyed it anyway. We'll, we'll do another request show soon, so make sure you get that in there. Uh, Lee says, two Jeffs are better than one. Double the pleasure, triple the fun. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Lee. Um, good to have you here anyway, yeah. but no, Rowan's gone, you're raising a great kid that Jade can't laughter. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris says, challenge for Bell. I'm going with Here I Go. You pick the In Flames song. So here we go because, yeah, this will be interesting. What what In oh, Flames wow. are you going to play Here I Go? With Here I Go again, it would have to mm. be um, The Great Deceiver. Okay. Nice, dude. There you go, Chris. Have fun with that. Um, I'll, I wouldn't be surprised, Bell. We'll, we'll get something out of that, I'm pretty sure. Um <laughs> Michael oh. says, Bill has Chucky for her review, but if Chucky starts drinking wine too, I'm out. So, <laughs> oh, I'd, I'd love to see that. That would be, be great. And uh, here we go. Vinny says, two Jeffs would be like a hard rock spit roast. So there we go. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> this is why we do things the way we do. No, we're, not that. Yeah, we're, not, we're not explaining it. Uh, we're we'll not explaining it. We're not explaining that. No. no. Um, but... I, I guess, like I said, we did want to get uh, Jade in and one and done yeah, kind of early. Late, she does have something for the bin tonight, I You believe. have a bin, don't you? What are you putting what are you... in the bin? Cat music. <laughs> <laughs> That's my <laughs> girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there I think we, we go. can all agree with that. We all agreed with that one. Mm. Good job. There we go. Wow. <laughs> well... We'll let Jade go as long as she wants to go, I'm assuming, anyways. But, no, it's been an absolute blast having you with us, Jade. You want to stand thing up and have reviews done. So, wave goodbye to everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Jade. You? you did a Thank great job. Coming, Jade. Jade. Nice Thank to meet you, Jade. You. I'll be back. All good, man. It was good to see her again. Last time I saw her was when I was dropping off the drum kit. So, um, hopefully that's going well down there. Sorry, Julia. Um, <laughs> that was a bit of a world of trouble. Um, but no, that was that was cool. Like I said, we've had her on the TV stuff before. I like when we get a chance to to get the younger ones on. So it's it's always refreshing and interesting to get you know another generation's take on things. Well, we've had my kids on before, and it's been great to do that as well. So it's good to get Jay. We'll eventually get Rory to come in on a, a live stream. I'm sure one day, especially when we start talking about things like Queen, because I'm a massive fan of bands like that as well. So. Oh. Dave and Julia, again, are doing a fantastic job raising those two kids. So, yeah, they should be very, very proud. Just 
saying it again for the record for everyone else to sort of see here. Um, Nicole said goodnight to Jade. Chris says props to Lee for the Bill and Ted soundtrack lyrical reference with two Jeffs are better than one. <laughs> Did anyone else um, pick that up? Speaking of two Jeffs. <laughs> Not yet. Um, but Jolie says, loved having you on, Jade. Just beautiful. So there's a comments for the, uh, to watch back later on for everyone there as well. Yeah. All righty. I suppose we'll just keep playing on through, eh? We'll just keep going on to the rest of the new tunes for now. We'll get Dave into get, the mix when he comes back in. Two, yes, Jeff. Two seconds. All right. I, I... <laughs> okay. We are having he'll, all sorts of fun tonight. He'll be back. Um, Maybe. <laughs> here we go. Hang on now. He said two seconds. He's doing something here. Whoa, are you trying again to get your setup going? Well, there's noise this time. There we go. Come out of here, you bastard. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, yeah, we you. heard that. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. We heard that. Can you hear yeah, us, though? I think you can hear me. Can you hear I us? Can hear I don't think he can hear us. Yeah, I know. This is going to be a great turn, turn around. <laughs> he can't hear us, but we can hear him. Jeff, Jeff, come in, Canberra. Can you hear us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take that as a no. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Jeff. Are you with us? Can you hear us? Yes, it's gonna work. It's not Jeff. gonna work. <laughs> Wake up, Knocked Jeff! If you can hear us. <laughs> we'll have to write write your messages, whole messages. <laughs> but that won't work because he can't hear us. We can hear him. He can say whatever he wants, but we'll have to do. We'll all have to write write up our reviews. We'll write questions up to him. <laughs> your turn, Jeff. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Oh, let's see what's going on here. Um, what do we got here? Rowan says an episode of Terror Choice with each of you replaced by your kids would be funny. We've done it with better halves oh, before. Oh no! Amazing. Oh. Um, Jolly said, "I'm not used to Jeff 3D." And Vinny says, "Imagine his headphones answered back. Who you calling bastard?" <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Jeff, can you hear us? And we're going to assume no. I'm sorry if I upset your daughter there. Dave. No, no she's cool. Daughter. She's thick skinned. Yeah. yeah, she does. Okay. Cool. She's not listening to anyone from England anymore. It's all good. All right. <laughs> we're now returning to regular yeah. programming. All kids just, should be yeah. in bed. If any of Jade's kids or Jade's friends are watching, go to bed now. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't watch anymore. You don't want to see any more of this mm -hmm. stuff. Um, this is the cut off point. Tough. Jade, go to sleep. It's the charades version of the Hard Rock Show. That's a good point, Tuff. <laughs> Here it is tonight. And Lee's gone turned into an episode of The Wiggles. Wake up, Jeff. <laughs> Tuff says, yeah. first word sounds like thrash. So there we go. Um, for the charades kind of thing there. Uh, well, obviously for Jeff, it's not sounding like a lot of anything because he's just disappeared again. Um, All right. Crack on. Play on. So the next song, which is actually kind of funny because in my random order of things, it actually is Jeff's song. So we're going to do uh -oh. this one. We're going to do this. I'm going to fuck with him now. So he's going to do it. Or should I, should I wait? Should I be kind and wait? I'll wait. Um, let's it's move on. It's a crazy then. night. Just it go with it, I reckon. All right. Go with, go anyway, with the we'll, crazy, Anyway, we'll give Jeff Andrew. a chance to come back in. Belle, we're going to do mm. your one next. So in the comments, in oh. the description box, there is a link to uh, Oni with Aura, which features Howard Jones and Josh Gilbert. Uh, it's from The Silver Line, the new album from them due October 2023. They're a Canadian band. Uh, but, Belle, it's your choice, so please let us know how you found it, one, and, and what drew you to it. Um, once again, YouTube scroll, YouTube. but there is a reason I clicked on this, and that is because it says featuring Howard Jones, mm -hmm. and I love him. So I thought checking this out would be a no-brainer. I'm glad I did. This is just a straight up and down banger. It's got great. Who's mood, Howard Jones? Great... Sorry, who's Howard Jones? He's a singer from, or well, the ex Kill Switch Engage singer. Yeah. Oh. Well, right. so yeah, so he's he was the middle. So they started with um, Jesse Leach, and then mm. went to Howard Jones and Jesse right. Leach again. Jesse Leach, yeah. Right. Um, but he sings for um, um something about a t torch it's like the oh torch yeah thing. but he's in a few different bands. bits and pieces there the torch yeah, one, and, yeah he's in a lot of different features. pieces now yeah yeah and he's but still he's, jumped um, in with um kill switch jump back in for one of their he songs does. So yeah. he, he does he floats around a bit now so but that's what he's yeah. most known for thank yeah. you thank you really yeah great yeah great voice really powerful again. um Take 10. Take so 10. he he features on here 
Um, and yeah, yeah Oni, I, I haven't heard of this band. They're um Canadian <coughs> band, I mm. think, or at least Cayman Islands. Jeff might have more insight into how that If works. you can hear us, Jeff, we're talking about the Oni track now. If you can I hear can. Us. Yeah, oh, I awesome. can. Cool. I can hear you. Nice. I'm back to my regular setup. It nice. just took a while. Time. I, right. I, I apologize. Yay. That's all good. I know. Yeah. Technology was, it was great. Yeah. It was entertaining. Yeah, it was yep. entertaining. So we're still going through the first thought. So literally it's just an introduction out there. Yeah. So we're just talking yeah, about Oni stuff. I haven't even said me. much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um yeah, Oni I, and so yeah, I, I clicked on it because of the Howard Jones, but I haven't mm. heard of um Oni, who is really just a guy called Jake Oni, but he um seems to have a band with him, I'm not sure. How that works, Wikipedia wasn't particularly helpful in that regard. So, no, that's right. Um, do some more digging on that, I think, because they're very good. Um, the song itself isn't overly complicated, but mm. it is interesting. Um, it's almost playful the way they've used rhythm and space together to create something a bit different. Um, Jake's vocals are fantastic. Uh, this dude can really sing. Um, mm. I love the tone of his voice. Um, when he's singing cleanly, he adds a nice bit of grit to it as well at times. And he can scream like a motherfucker as well. Mm. Um, both guest vocalists give it their all. Their performances are faultless. Um, and then the three of them sound great together in, in the one song. Um, Jake and Howard harmonising just in one little bit was beautiful as well. Mm. Um, video was cool. Um, straight away yeah. I was seeing Star Wars, um, specifically the spaceship mm. in the first yep. scene yep. in the first movie. Um, yep. I'm not sure how the face oh. paint fit into that, but maybe that's just their thing generally. Um, I don't so I only, vaguely, only vaguely questioned that. Howard getting up from behind a desk like some kind of space boss dude looking badass. That was cool. <laughs> and then he just gets up and does his thing. Um, mm. And I also thought it was a shame that with, um, um, oh, what's his name? John? Is it John Gilbert? Is the, yeah. the spirit box guy? Yeah. Um, Gosh, the other vocalist. Yep. Like how that, yeah, yes. Um, so they projected him. He wasn't there in the video yeah. in person, but. I thought it was a wasted opportunity. Why couldn't they project him coming out of a droid? That would have been <laughs> perfect. I so, think Dizzy might have packed of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was yeah. probably pushing it, but it yeah. didn't have to be R2-D2, just any droid. No. droid. Um, so I love the there was little guitar licks here and there that had a very in flamesy sound about them, I thought. Um, there was one right at the end, like literally in the last few seconds that, if you want to hear exactly what I'm talking about, check that bit out. Um, but it appears a couple of times otherwise. Um, the new album comes out tomorrow, apparently. And okay. so I'll definitely be giving it a listen. I haven't heard any other, I don't know if there are any other singles off it, but um, but this is the only track that I've heard. Yeah, so I'll, I'll check out the album and hopefully it's as cool as this song. So, yeah. Nice. That's it. Cool. Perfect. All righty. Let's go to Dave next on this track. How did you go with the latest from Oni? Yeah, this was cool. Never heard of this Oni guy before, but yeah, I like this. Um, get straight to the point with the opening second. Uh, very cool, heavy riff. Guitar tone was awesome. Hit you right from the start. And nice, nice shifts in tone between the verse and the chorus. I like how each singer comes in at different times and adds something different to the song. And all their vocal styles are very unique and they work well together. Um, that was a really thing that stood out about the song for me. It was the vocal tones. Um, okay. I, I've never been a Killswitch fan. I didn't like well, like when I first heard them. I didn't do anything. But I'm going to have to check out their era with Howard Jones because I really liked his vocals on this song. Okay. Tevi but conveyed a lot of emotion. So I had to Google who he was. And I was like, oh, okay, he was on Killswitch. So now he's in yeah. like the middle part. The original singer's back. So I will check out his section because I wasn't too thrilled with the original singer. Um, the video has an interesting setting, looks futuristic, like a spaceship, and then the singer's got the wall paint, so it's like Space Vikings and that type of shit, which is an interesting contrast. Space and I like how each singer was brought yeah. in Space Vikings. I like how each singer was brought in in a different way in the video. So, yeah, this was pretty cool. I thought it was good. Nice. All righty. Cool, cool. Um, I'll go next on this one. Now, 
yeah, the the album is coming out shortly. This one, you know, I, I keep making this game now, or I, you know, say who's got a type, and this is much more in Belle's world than you know the the rest of us will sort of gravitate toward this one. That's why Belle is bringing her influences into play. Um, but this, you know, this leans definitely into the metalcore side of things. But there's a whole lot of melody in this one, which is really cool. Yeah, it's got that Jekyll and Hyde side of things, which you expect. You know, you get the heavier stuff, but the melodic parts really do. Like they have loads of space. They sound fantastic. And that's just a great contrast to the heavy stuff, which is, you know, firmly the genty kind of territory. But it just it works well, those two things offset with this song really nicely. Um both aspects really well blended on this one. The intensity is really offset by the hook kind of thing. So there's a hook in this song, which is, you know, just the verse is just full on, but then that that hook comes in. And it's not the boppy sort of chorus, it's it's got just a great melodic song with a bit of weight and meaning behind it. Um, the breakdown aspect of this where Josh comes in in particular, that was, I thought, a really neat bit of composition in this song overall. The use of harmony in that part and also in little bits and pieces throughout the whole song was really nicely done. But there's also some really cool groove in this one. It's very tight, very snappy, but there's also, you can tell it's not one of those ones where it's been snapped to the grid. They're playing with feel. It's real instruments playing in real time kind of thing. It's not just here's a bunch of samples and cut it together and repeat the loop kind of thing. Um, yeah, it just feels very organic, which is cool for this style of music. Uh, this is a really cool song that does a good job of breaking out from the pack. And I think that it's so strong on its own merits that it would stand out from the pack even without the guest appearances. The guest appearances are just icing on the cake for what's already a really good song at its foundational core. The only downside I have on this one, which is an interesting contrast to what's been discussed before with Bell and Dave, um, is for me, Howard Jones. You get Howard Jones in for a reason, and obviously you get him for the name recognition, but you get him because his vocal tone is so distinct. I love his vocal mm -hmm. tone, just like yeah. Bell does. I think he's got a great voice, both in the extreme side and in the clean side. I think he's a fantastic vocalist, fantastic performer. I just thought that the way they added the effect and how heavily they added the effect of his vocal to make it sort of more in line with what's happening with the main vocal made it kind of a little bit redundant to bring him in because it just made him sound a bit too mm. much like the other ones. And for me, I was like, I wasn't as big of a fan of that. It's a small gripe. I like the song. I just would have loved if you'd have had, you know, Howard Jones actually cutting through as Howard Jones. And I think that would have been, if you kept him sort of organic and not apply the same effect, it would have been even a greater contrast to the more effect-based vocal from the lead, which I thought would have been a really, I think they missed a trick yeah. there. If that makes sense. Yeah. So yep. it's, a, it's a small thing. I wouldn't have done it, but that's my thoughts. But they did. It's their song, so whatever. But that's just what I thought of it. But that's the only grab I got. I think it's a great song, great choice, really interesting. A band I'll have to go on do some more digging on um definitely so well done bell it's a, it's a great song for mine so even like i said that that's like a small gripe because fundamentally it would cut through from the pack just on the song merit alone without the experiences mm. so i think it's mm. very very cool all righty up next let's go to conrad how'd you go with this one um <sighs> you, you, you you bell's dying already like oh no <laughs> she's dreading it um to be honest to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, usually, I hate this kind of genre. I loathe it mm. with a passion. And usually, I would just be like, fuck off, get this shit away from me. Um, <laughs> I'm not a fan of Kill Switching. Kill switching um, yep. I don't get it. I never have. And this whole genre, I don't really particularly like very much. But this was better than nice. a lot of that stuff. A lot of that stuff doesn't really... I don't really give it much attention, but this this actually made me go, oh, actually, this is, this is a bit better than the other stuff of this genre that's out there. Um, they can't be all that bad. I mean, Mustaine's got them opening up for, for Megadeth at the moment. Mm. Uh, they're playing they're playing in Canada. I think they're playing Canada at the moment. They're first on. They're one of the first okay, acts cool. on. Nice. Uh, I think they're, they're opening, and then it's Bullet for My Valentine and then Megadeth. So, that's yeah, cool. I mean, they can't be all that bad. Um, no, look, they're okay. They're all right. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't wow me, but it didn't make me run for the hills and in disgust. Um, you know, I give this six out of ten. Hey, that's good from you. Actually, pretty good. good for me. <laughs> for me, yeah. 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 Well done. Thanks, okay. Right. Well, yeah. Cause... On the round, it's going well. One to go. So, Jeff. Usually, I'd, 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 I'd run Sorry. away from this sort of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's actually yeah. what makes it really cool that you, that you yeah. yeah, enjoy it as much as you did. So, yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Different worlds are actually crossing over on this, which is nice. One more. Right. 
Jeff. All right. All right. So this, clearly this guy, you know, he's from Ontario. I'm from Ontario. So, yeah, we're from the same province in Canada. Um, I looked up, tried to get a little bit more information. There's not a lot there. Mm. Uh, it, he mm. looks like a one-man guy that does everything. He's obviously got a hired guns, band guys that do stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Oni, of course, that's not his real name, right? Because Oni, if you guys know, in Japanese folklore is a demon. Um, mm. it, it's a de demonic creature of giant size. I, think I got this Google, and so I'm just reading it. It's a demonic creature, uh, often of giant size and great strength and fearful appearance. And if you ever seen those, have you ever seen those really cool, like demonic um, Japanese masks and stuff? You know the ones. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's mm -hmm. an oni. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew I'd heard right. the term. Yeah. 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 Is. So that's an oni. So I quite like this song a lot. I, I thought it had really good energy. It, it there was something about it. Um, I thought that the, the main guy, the oni, whatever his name, his last name, only there. I, what was his first name? Was it Justin? Jake? Jake. I, I knew it was yeah, Jake, Jake Oni. Um, yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, but then I thought when Howard Jones came in, obviously of Kill Switch Engage, that sort of I thought in in a way, and I agree with what you say, Andrew. It was like Howard was underutilized, but his voice does still add something to mm. this song. Yeah, and it, it and, yeah. and in a lot, I thought it actually in some ways he stole the show, really. Yeah, I thought um, that. And, and, and um, it, he's just got like I've always been a Kill Switch Engage fan, and you know the end of Heartache. I think was the album, the first album that he that Howard Jones sung. I think, uh, yeah, I and think that's so. the album with like the with no the, the hand. Is that the first no? one? No, no, I don't oh. think so. Well, that's I'm blanking on the first one. But that's yeah, like 2004. But it's got one. like the the heart with the nails and shit on it in in the hands. It's a really cool. Um, that's a great album, but. Um, uh, yeah, he's got yeah. just something there. It was just that um, I think what Howard brings to this, uh, he just helped push the song over the top for me, and I, I really like that. Um, End of Heartache but, was the first one. Sorry, you're right. And yeah, it's the torch yeah. Itself. Alive. The is and, the torch. Yeah. yeah. The so End of Heartache yeah. was Howard Jones' first one? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I, I thought it was, but My I wasn't bad. sure. No, it's no, okay. Right, no, it's, all, it's all good. Mm. Uh, I just remember the cool album cover because it had like a hand with mm. a heart all bloody and there was like these like, nails. thousand nails out of it. It was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, something so I'm simple but look cool, so cool. Um, yeah, I like the sound. I'm, I, obviously, I'm going to be uh, looking into these guys. Now, I didn't think that they were breaking any new ground. I thought that mm. the sound, we've heard this sound before from a lot of other different bands. Uh, there's nothing here that we go, oh, wow, I've never heard this before. But Having said that, they do it very well. So mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, you know, it, the old thing: if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They yep. that fit perfectly. So uh, they ticked a lot of boxes for me. I liked it. I think maybe that has something to do with the kill switch engage. For me, I love that. Awesome. And uh, so yeah, I gave it like an eight out of ten. So I, I really liked it. So thank you, Bill. Wow. Yeah. Cool. That's there good. you go, Bill. Winner all around. Yeah. So nicely done. <clears throat> all right. Let's see what the audience have to say about this one. We have uh, Vinny says, Jeff has transported to another dimension where Connor gives scores of eight and nine. <laughs> this is the AI. Doesn't exist. I'm, I'm not really here. Jeff no, is asleep. That's it. Um, tough. Was the song filmed on the Death Star from Star Wars? Well, that's mm. the other thing there. But Rowan mm. says, yep, a banger. So some love for it there. Wow. Ty says, on that's the other right. side of the wall, Luke shoots Video those missiles cool. into old Rip Oni. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> But Man Family says powerful voice. I have to listen to more sounds. Uh, two more sounds soothing. Okay, cool, 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 mm. cool. Tough says I need this band to lay instead of my alarm. I would I get away from my sleep headbanging. What a great find! So there we go. Some some love for it too. Nicole says this has a mixture of everything in metal, which is nice. Yeah. Rowan says listen to another single from them uh, now featuring Jared Dines. Another great track. Okay, cool. So some cool. Nice there. Then Tuff says Silence in the Room is awesome, Tastic. I don't know that one per se. I'll go and check it out. Here we go. Guys here saying hi, Rockers. Hey. Good to see you. Glad you joined us. Um, what have we got here? Darren says, This is awesome, mate. Uh, so awesome. Great track. Interesting. Braveheart makeup. So there we go. More love for it there. <laughs> Sammy's here. Good to see yeah. you, Sammy. Says, Hello. I'm late. Doesn't matter what time you get here. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Um, oh, here we go. Chris says, mashup update. I found the isolated vocal of Here I Go Again and I'm currently doing an AI vocal removal no. of the great receiver. No, no, no AI. 
You, ha you have to play it <laughs> on guitar. Here we go. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> um, Jolie says, I love Bull My Valentine says, some love for that one. Uh, Tuff says, looked up only terrifying stuff. That would be the masks I'm thinking about. Yeah. And uh, Vinny says, real punchy and aggressive. Nice one, Bill. So a lot of love for that track there, which is doing the rounds nicely. All righty. Jeff's going to go back to back now because we were going to do his one before, but then he sort of jumped in and out and back in again. I'm sorry about that. Um, oh, you will be because now we're about to go and do your song. So this is Threshold Pilot in the Sky of Dreams. There's a link to that in the description and in the comments now. Uh, it's from Dead Reckoning back in 2007, and this is an English band, if I'm correct. So, yeah. Jeff, fill us in on why you chose this one. A bit of a blast in the past. Well, I love threshold uh and yep. so i kind of wrote a little uh little thing explaining sort of how i got to that point so i'll, I'll read it so i can't actually remember where i first heard of these guys um yep. uh but i think it was the album subsurface from 2004 and i think i could my, you know how your memory plays tricks i yeah. think it was in a bargain bin at jb hi-fi I swear. Wow. And um, I just, there was something about it. Didn't know who they were. Bought it. Okay. Um, yep. I, that's what I think. I, I, I could be, you know, I could be smoking crack. I really don't know. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have a memory of where, but I think that's yeah. when I was actually trying to think of like, you know, how did I know these guys? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the album itself is, uh, this album is from a whole the whole thing is fantastic um yep. but pilot in a sky of dreams um is just an amazing song it's, it's from the album dead reckoning from 2007 as you mentioned in fact the video that i included um mm -hmm. is actually like the radio vi you know it's yep. like three and a half minutes the actual song is it goes for almost 10. yeah um and uh so i trust if anyone out there likes this video or likes this song by all means, listen to and watch the, you know, um, or don't watch the video because it's three and a half minutes, but mm. uh, listen to the actual song. Uh, I felt that uh, there's just something about Threshold and it, it comes across in uh, in this song. Um, Threshold is just this really, really cool band that um, they're, they're classified as like prog rock or prog metal, but mm. they don't um, it, they mix like this witty lyrics um, and, and very sharp melodies and uh, just, you know, it, it, there's something about it. Mm. Um, and of course, I've gone off script now. Of course, I, I had a bunch of stuff written uh, and I've completely gone off script. But um, I, I think that as far as um, a lot of prog bands fall into uh, is that it's it's a where where the they write com complex songs that go on uh, on and on and on and really it, it becomes a showcase of their talent uh, and they forget at the end of the day how to write great melodic songs mm. that never seem to get bogged down under their own weight. We hear that all the time in a lot of prog. Uh, That's somehow, one of the biggest criticisms of it. Yeah. Yeah. Threshold has found a way to to to, to be prog. And yet, not get bogged down. Uh, if you mm. look at their albums, most of the songs, I think Pilot in the Sky of Dreams might actually be one of the longest songs that they've ever done. Okay. Uh, most of their albums, most of the songs are like, you know, four or five minutes. Uh, that's pretty mm. much it. Um, and so uh, I think that for me, um, while I love that um, extravagance that you get in some bands like Dream Theater and stuff like that, and, you know, Fate's Warning and all these other, you know, prog bands. Mm. Uh, I love it to a, to an extent, but I also recognize sometimes you just have to go and roll your eyes, go, fuck, guys, come on, get back to the song, you know. Um, mm. I know we all know you can play. We all know you're like, you're like a virtuoso, but it'd be nice if they could learn to write an actual song. Mm. I think Dream Theater is, uh, is a classic example of that. I love their stuff, but I think that, that they have, in some ways, and Dave is probably, you know, getting the knife out now. Um, but he, he, it, it, they, in some ways, I think they have, uh, they've forgotten how to write a song, you know. So what could have been five or six minutes uh, turns into nineteen minutes, and then at the end of the day, it, it just doesn't work in some for most people, and that's why they're very polarizing. 
Mm. Um, now, I think with this song, uh, if you like, like I said, if you like your music, music to be thought provoking, great melodies, tasteful, this is your band. Well worth your time. Um, and like I said, they've been since I found them, I guess, in the bargain band. I really can't remember, but I'm going to stick with that story. Mm. Uh, they have be actually become one of my all time favorite bands. Now, they've had Ooh. numerous singers. Okay. Yeah. Um, they so the singer that you hear in this song and unfortunately he sadly he's passed away. He I think passed away. The last in, album I did with him too, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, and he actually left. He left the band. Um, and he left the band and um, he passed away in 2004. Mm. Um, they ended up getting um, there was a guy that sung for Arian. You know the band Arian. Yep. Um, yep. Da- Damien Wilson. He, okay. Yep. He came in. Um. Uh, he was actually the singer before um, uh, Andrew McDermott, this guy here. He was the okay. singer before Andrew McDermott came in, and then they went back to Damon Wilson, got him again. <laughs> uh, and then they eventually fired him, <laughs> and they went back and got their original singer from back in like the 1990s. And wow. has, he's, he's still their singer now. Um, wow. And he's got a, quite a good voice. Uh, but yeah, they've definitely been, you know, Singers out, singers in. Unfortunately, like I said, Andrew was my was my favorite of all of them, mm. and you know that might have been because he was the first one I heard. You know how it is, yeah, yeah, the yeah. First album, you know, so yep. that could be great voice. I love his voice, but uh, yeah, and so it's no result. Uh, no, no, no surprise that I I I voted for my own, but I'm not going to tell you what I gave it. But I love this song, so you can imagine what mm. I gave it. Yeah. <laughs> um. So uh, yeah, that's it. So I hope uh, I hope you guys out there really enjoy it. Cool. Well, let's start doing rounds and let's go to Dave first. What do you think of it? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. Conrad, part two. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, I, I went straight to Spotify. I tried to listen to the song before checking out the video because I can get sidetracked by videos. So I listened to the full 10-minute version. And I went back to the link you sent, Jeff, and they saw the four-minute version. Yeah. Sellouts. Prog doesn't <laughs> fucking cut songs. What the hell? Here we go. Here we go. Okay. But, you know, <laughs> nice intro. Piano's cool. The vocals are cool. Clean tone guitar's cool. There's a laid back solo. And heavy riffs kick in and they're cool when they kick in. There's lots of different sections. Don't think it flows very well from section to section. There's a cool synth solo. Mm. Everything you just said, I was thinking the complete opposite. It doesn't wow. have that generic flow that bands like Dream Theater have. It's all pretty good. A lot happens in 10 minutes. It does drag a bit. I've listened yeah. to the whole album. When you shared the song weeks ago when we were on hiatus, I listened to it. It was good. It didn't rock my world, though. I will listen to the album more. I will listen to more of their stuff. But part of what impresses the hell out of me with prog metal is the speed, the well facts, the holy fuck, how are they managing this, how are they are remembering this shit. And I don't get that interest and passion from this. I think this is it's very easy to do this when you play at half pace. Wow. Um, the lyrics didn't grab me at all. I don't know what the hell this song was about, and I didn't really care. Um, the video was pretty cool. It was strange when some random guy just fucking strolls, ac- like glides across the floor for some yeah, reason. Yeah. And then later on, there's a whole bunch of them that do that. And I kind of get that they were setting it up. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, on first viewing, I was confused, but okay. It's supposed to be trippy, I guess. But yeah, overall, it's not terrible. I wouldn't turn it off. It was on, but I wouldn't put it on on purpose. But yeah, pretty good song. Yeah. Okay. Relative. Sorry, man. No, no, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. That's um, oh, uh, look, I said, I know you, you're a big fan of Prague, and and um, yeah, no, you know, I, just, it, I, it, so it didn't grab me. So, to, you, no, to use a Conrad line, it didn't flick my switch. So, well, okay. there we go. It's it's a it's a Do thing. It's All right, thing. let's go to Bell next. How'd you go with it? Um, okay, <laughs> <laughs> no. No, sorry. I'm just, I'm just, Should I'm just gathering my thoughts. Now? Okay. I'm just gathering. I'm just gathering thoughts. Um, all right. So I didn't, I didn't see the video, by the way, which sounds intriguing. So I should do that. Um, mm. but I didn't look at the length of the song, uh, before it started. So I, I just thought it was another ballad, um, from you this week, Jeff, and. When the ballad turned into more of a rock uh, song, I looked at the song length and thought, I bet this is prog. Okay, <laughs> I'm getting used to prog, so let's see how this goes. 
And yeah, wow. <laughs> it's completely epic. Holy Ooh. shit, Jeff. Um, I actually thought it sounded like a dream theater song, but oh. I don't have I don't have a whole lot <laughs> of experience. Wow. Well, like, you know, I mean it has the vibe, the overall vibe, it's certainly not as technical and yeah, you know, as like full on in your face, mm. like look at us kind of thing. But it's just got a certain, I don't know, just the the way they the chord progression, or I don't know, something. It just had a dream theatre feel to it. That's just my opinion. Um, okay. But there are elements of other bands in there too. Like I could hear Queen. I could hear yeah. Journey. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, just in certain parts, certainly not yeah. the whole way through, but just grabs here and there. I'm like, oh, that sounds like mm -hmm. Queen, Journey. Um so both musically and lyrically, this song takes you on an amazing ride through lots of moods and paces. The whole thing just, I thought, ebbs and flows beautifully. Uh, it's it's an uplifting listen, despite the story taking a nosedive about halfway through the song. Mm. You get it? Nosedive. Yeah, um, I get it. <laughs> I, I could I could continue with with the puns. Do I have to I do love... I have to cue up like the whole boom drum kit? Yes, you know? please. You should, you should oh. get that sound. sound okay, I'll get All that right. set up. <laughs> cue it, cue it. I love the way the chorus melody soars. The ah, use of group. Hey. <laughs> Ready? I think I'm done. Um, okay. <laughs> all right, the harmonies are stunning um, in the chorus but also throughout the song. The solos are perfectly placed to suit the music, like the insane blistering keyboard solo while the song is in full flight. And then the slower paced guitar solos at the start and then again towards the end, they're just, they're just perfect. Um, mm. the, yeah, the attention to detail that went into the composition of this song is second to none. And the more I played, the more I played it, the more I appreciated it. And with each spin, more things just popped out at me to think about. Like I'm loving the sound of the synth chords during the verses or... Mm -hmm. um, Jesus Singer sounds fantastic and yep. how perfect is his voice for the style of music. Yep. And I'm really sad to hear that he passed away, um, yeah. mm. which means this is quite an old song. I didn't realise that it wasn't. Yeah, 2007. Recent. 2007, yeah, yeah. Wow. And uh, I, I asked, I, I was curious. The reason I brought an old song was because I was looking through and there was just nothing that was grabbing me on, on Frontiers. And uh, so I thought, well, um, what am I going to do? Right. So I messaged Dave. Number one this week. And, and, and Dave said, yeah, you can, you can. You know, I won't make a habit of it. But uh, I, I've wanted to showcase this guy, these guys, mm. for a long time. Mm. And I thought, well, why not? Yeah. Perfect so. choice. Absolutely you, perfect that was because it does. Review. It showcases. It showcases everything they can do, like slow, yeah. fast, super fast, um, everything in between. Like it's just, it's a beautiful song. I'm glad that you shared it. So thank you. I yeah, that was well a done. Beautiful review. <laughs> thank you. All thank right. you. Well, I'm gonna come in next and fuck shit up. Um, uh -oh. so <laughs> no, I'm really not. Look, okay, Conrad. Um, <laughs> then uh, look the um this one is very much Dave's come back just in time for this but actually I, I when I listened to this one I thought of the more ballad side of dream theater when I heard it there is a, a similar tonality um to the way he sings here to the way James Labrie can sing in some songs but I thought this was where James could be more, or a more harder tone like a harder edged kind of vocal in terms of just it has a cutting to, uh, a feel to it. This one was very soft and blended to the music very, very well for the style that was going on. Um, that said, though, when you get that sort of that that vibe at the start, there's a part where it kicks in and it gets you know rapidly progressive, and that reminded me of Rush, which is immediately why I thought Jeff would like this one because there's a, a certain little bit that feels like Rush when you listen to it as well. Um, so yeah, it, it's an interesting little one. There's a lot of beauty in this track. There's some fantastic layering in it. Um, there's a bit going on sonically, but they can also strip things back at the same time in the right ways in this song. When you add the lyrics to all of that, um, for me, there's a lot to digest in what's relatively just a few minutes when you take it in terms of the um, the single version of it. 
it'd be interesting to hear this one more. I didn't listen to the 10 minute track. I'll, I'll say that now, but I would be interested to hear this one, not only in the full length of it, but also in the context of the whole album to see where it sort of fits in on things there. That'd be an interesting sort of just, you know, experiment to go and go through as well. Um, but this one, it, it builds overall. It is still much more on the softer side of music in general, but the pacing, the phrasing, I think it suits the style of music that's going on with it. And while it isn't anything groundbreaking per se, it's, it's yeah. you know, it's, it's well written, well mixed, well performed. It's a good song. Um, there is a tasty little solo in this one too. It, it channels a little bit of a Dave Gilmore kind of a vibe, that solo, I thought. Um, so I think basically mm-hmm. long story short, if you're into bands like Dream Theater, Rush and Pink Floyd, um, I think you'll definitely enjoy this one person, which is odd that, you know, Dave, didn't really grab it so much, but then again, he doesn't oh. like Rush. Maybe that was a thing. I don't know, but yeah. Um, well, two out of the three ain't bad. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take it as a, as what it is. But it's another band that I will have. To, I have checked out some of their stuff before, um, but not for a while. Um, it's one of those bands, you know, it's on that list of you know never-ending things to go and check out more of. Yeah. But no, it's a, it's a solid song. So yeah, nicely done. And I'm glad you brought. It. I know it's an old one, but it's nice to get one of those here and there that goes okay. Um, it's a good little showcase. The album's pretty good overall. I gave the okay. whole album a listen for a few yep. months ago. Yeah, yeah. Nice. All right, well, so, I would like to hear that when I get a chance. I don't know when that'll happen, but no, it'd be yeah, cool to, no. to go yeah, through Dead that. Dead Reckoning's good. I prefer their previous album, which was Subsurface. That's, okay. To me, that's the better album, but um, I don't think they did any videos or anything from that. Okay, so. yeah, fair enough. All righty. Conrad, over thank to you. you. Thank you. It was nice with you, Andrew. Thank you. Huh. Well, yeah, um, I... I remember I spoke about these guys on a radio show years cool. ago in, in the in the UK and uh, in, nice. in, uh, here in London. Right. I was on Total Rock Radio. I was hosting a show, and I think I'd seen them at Bloodstock. I, I saw them uh, at Bloodstock first uh, when it was still indoors. When Bloodstock yep. was still indoors, I think it was the second Bloodstock, and they'd played. They'd played on it, and I was quite impressed by them. But um, this, yeah, this it it, it does. It, I, I referred to them then as as the UK's answer to Dream Theater back then. Okay. Huh. Um, so, <laughs> you know, know, yeah, they're like the UK's answer. I won't say the the comparison is quite the quite the same, but they're certainly for mm. bands that like Dream Theater. They're going to enjoy yeah. this stuff. It's mm. in the same audience. Um, look, it, it doesn't. I'm I'm with Dave on this, and and it's not often me and Dave agree. Mm. <laughs> wow, that <laughs> yeah. was a man. I'm, I'm with Dave yeah. on this. I, we agreed on something last week too. I yeah, it's starting to <laughs> happen. Start yeah. yeah. With Jalen, man, <laughs> can you so, friends yet? Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I would Dave on this, and it just didn't. It 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 it's okay. It's okay. It, it's it's mm. not bad. Look, they're up there doing it. I'm not. I wish I was playing in a live band and and could you know. Um, would I be playing this sort of thing? Probably not. Mm. But nevertheless, this is it's executed relatively well. Um, yep. You know, yeah. Look, but it's not in the same. I don't know. Quite the same. It doesn't grab mm. me quite the way same Dream Theater does. Yep. Quite grab me in the same yeah. way. But it's it's still good. Look, I would recommend seeing them live because they I did see them live and they were mm. very impressive. I'd love to. Yeah, that'd they be were cool. very impressive. They were very mm. good. That's awesome. Yep. Indeed. Oh, and another band. Um, you're familiar with a band called Spread Eagle, are you, Jeff? Spread Eagle. And only by name. It's pretty okay. I've heard, I've heard yeah, that's not the band, mate. All right. You can, yeah, that's it. So, yeah. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> not, <laughs> like yeah, not eagled. Not eagled, but yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, spread, never mind. Spread, Eagles, spread Eagle uh, of death metal, right? No, 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 no. Okay. I was, no, no. I'm going to get... That's that was a bad pun. That was just a bad <laughs> Never mind. A bad Don't worry about it. I'm trying to fit that. That was a joke. Them. I'm yeah, catching them. Never mind. That was a bad joke. Anyway, yep. it's all good. Uh, yeah, look, this is okay, but it didn't didn't rock my world. I'll give this maybe five out of ten. Sorry. Oh, I'll take okay. that. Sorry. Yeah. That's all right. No, it's all good. I'll all take right. that. Let's see what the audience have to say. Vinny's gone real Top Gun soundtrack vibes on this one. Jeff, rate it. So there we go. We're getting some love for it straight off. Um, I figured Rowan to jump in here because Thresholds Surface yeah. is one of my favorite albums. Never heard this album, though. Great stuff. So there we go. There we go. Um, Subsurface. Chris, 
Chris Threshold. It's as if Steve Harris fired all of Maiden in 1993 and hired Blaze Bailey, Jim Steinman, and Kansas to make new Iron Maiden album. Wow, that's a comment. <laughs> wow, that's I'm not sure insult. if that's a compliment or an insult. I don't know. I think uh, that's no, not, not a compliment. Probably would have been better than a couple of Blaze Bailey albums we got, but yeah. <laughs> would be interesting though, if nothing hey, else. X Factor's all right. Uh, oh, the X Factor is okay, and there's like, mm. one song on the other album that I like as well. Well, two songs. Clansman. Clansman and and Future Real. Mm. Yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. Moving on. We're not doing this. Uh, Joel, <laughs> we're not doing this. Not again. We've done it before. Jolie says, Threshold, Pilot and Sky Dreams is just a beautiful song. So there we go. More love yep. for it there. Okay. Uh, there we are. Tuck says, a bit slow for me, but not bad. I can't complain all my life as I failed as a mime act, I guess, or something I said, lol. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need that drum kit, don't I? Uh, Jolly says, Jeff yeah. is covered from into my ears at the moment. So there we go. Uh, yeah. says, great to see oh here we go great to see Stevie Wonder on drums so obviously <laughs> fake mission impaired with his percussion skills here we go see this video um <laughs> Andrew says thresholds sound reminds me of a lot of journey's music I pick up a lot of harmonies and melodies that Neil Sean is known for interesting there nice pick up um just Sean Andrew Neil Sean uh, Bell, uh Lee says Bell's turning all of Dennis Denuto on us <laughs> Rest of my case. <laughs> it's the vibe yeah. of it. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's the vibe. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Michael says, I like this track, but I did think it sounded uh, dated a bit. Turns out it is. Did not know Threshold before now. So there we go. That's the point, though. Where, where it even doesn't, even if it's not a new song per se, it's still just a discovery for people. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. And Vinny's replied, it's the Constitution, it's Marbo, it's justice, it's law. So there we go. Um, Cleaned it three fucking best. times. I know. I'm a vocal <laughs> snob when it comes to metal, especially prog metal. Not a big fan of clean vocals in general, with a few exceptions. Although I do like, I do enjoy the sound of actual music. Finally, everything had dying feet as vocals. So there we go. Um, <laughs> speaking Tim's language now, original Tim. Uh, but Michael says ten minutes flew by for me. There's another great pun on this whole theme. Um, ah, nice one. Thing, here we go. And uh, right. Darren says I've tried to listen to these guys before, just doesn't grab me. So there you go. It is a bit of a hit and miss affair all around. All righty, another one to get through, which is uh, newer than the last one, but still a couple of years old now. It's Conrad's Choice up next, um, which is Wolf Tooth, which is a band we have done a few weeks back with a song called Broken Sword. Uh, this one uh, comes from the 2021 I uh, album Blood and Iron. Uh, last time around, Conrad had, had us go over one from the debut album, so now we're moving along in the discography. So what made you jo go to this one? Is it because you saw I them recently? It. Is this the third third album of theirs? It I believe be the so, record. yes. From memory, third the album. Third record, yeah. Look, I was really struggling to find something <laughs> because not much new out there. Yeah. It flicks with Switch, and it was yep. really difficult to find something. And I actually settled on this because I don't believe it's one of their best. I don't believe it's their best song. Okay, so cool. So I actually just settled yeah. on this. It's like I was running out of time. And I'm like, fuck, what am I going to give you? And this, I saw this and I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll go with this. This is off their yep. latest record. And, and chose it, but it's certainly not um, top of my list of, of, of their songs. But um, yep. nevertheless, I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, um, I'll rate this probably seven out of ten. Yep. So I'm going to be critical on it, you know. Yeah. But still, it, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I like the tone. I like the, the tone and the riffing. I love the riffing mm -hmm. and I love the tone. And I like his vocal. Cool. I like the way it switches between the thrashier stuff and then goes yeah. into more the Sab Sabbath esque stoner mm -hmm. rock stuff so yeah 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 it's 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 cool and i'll, I'll, I'll get I have, i'll we'll go to dave next but before we do it's like there's it's interesting that what you're saying crosses over into a note that i've made about the song which we'll, we'll get to that but dave over to you yeah um okay <laughs> old school guitar tone is cool i like it old school composition i like it's cool to hear some back to basics metal so many subgenres and genres and different types and all different excellent yeah. produ production values and everything. Bare bones, cool, good band playing. It's good. Very melodic guitar lines, very clean and clear production. It's cool. The guitar tone is great. The song is pretty cool, but lyrically had me giggling like a fucking 12 year old, knowing that <laughs> the word sword can be a euphemism for the word cock. <laughs> lines oh. like the blood from my broken sword. Had me giggling like a fucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> you were looking. Maybe you were looking for that. I, think I really so, wasn't. I, I just couldn't. 
It just popped in my head. Sword means cock. The blood no, from my broken cock. I don't know how you look at a sword and think cock. I have no I wasn't idea. Looking how you at sword. I'm listening to the song and I got this fucking word in my let's, head. Let's not get into And then I put the video please, on. Please. Oh, okay, anyway. this is quite frightening. Then I put the video on. And <laughs> he's not a young man, is he? You associate the sword with cock. I have no idea how that happens. You got this guy in his mid fifties talking about his broken sword and it's bleeding. <laughs> only Dave, you, Dave, only you Dave, can look at it this hang way. On, hang on, Dave. How <laughs> yeah. awkward is it for you when you have to take your kids to the Wiggles and Captain Feathersword comes out? I've never taken them to the Wiggles, but yes, I did laugh at some of the Captain Feathersword bit with fucking videos twenty ten years ago when they were kids. Okay, at least we're, we're establishing there's a trend for you. But yeah, please continue. <laughs> Hey, Rory, Rory's nine years old. Everything could be a euphemism for him at his age. But no, yeah, I, I couldn't finish watching the video. But yeah, the song itself is cool. I just, just something about a guy in his mid 50s talking about his bleeding cock made me laugh. I don't believe he was, but no. I don't believe that's the, the Come song. Come on. About, but... Read some Motley Crue <laughs> lyrics. Sword doesn't oh. mean sword. Oh, <laughs> It's true. I well, think they're true. talking about not going into battle. Alan off the wheel of time oh, here, Dave. Oh, like, wow. When does a sword bleed? A sword might have blood on it, but there's no actual bleeding from the sword. It depends if you stab someone with a broken sword, then there's blood on it. Yeah, I get that. It didn't come didn't, across like that. I didn't go into I, I the need speech. therapy. Okay, I didn't let's look at on. the lyrics and come up with... I want to read these lyrics. That means cock. <laughs> <laughs> With the blood from my broken sword. Come on, I'm sorry, sword to you for this. Blood from my broken sword does not mean I have a fucking broken <laughs> cock. I mean, the I'm sword's sorry. bleeding either. Oh. Wow. We oh, are wow. only into in the anyway. wilderness. There you go. Right. Okay. You have some issues, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that. You, know that. you should know that by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's why we love you. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, Dave, is there anything else you wanted to add to that, or is that... No, is that no, no not okay. my job. All right, all right, we're going to move on. Uh, Jeff, yeah. over to you, <laughs> please. Okay, yeah. okay, and now for something completely different. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this song uh, is classic metal, and for me, it felt like this song was written in 1984. It just had that vibe. Uh, it's got a really familiar gallop in the riff uh, mm. that we've heard a million times before, but that's not a bad thing. Um, and I think if that's what they were going for, then mission accomplished. I quite like the song, uh, but I do feel like it's treading on old ground a little too much for me. Um, and, and I don't think it would make my playlist, but having said that, um, you know, it's it's not a bad song. I, I didn't hate it. And and also there was a part of a song though that I actually stopped, had to rewind. There's a guitar solo at three minutes and forty seconds, and the fucking thing is out of key. He's playing <laughs> out a fucking key. I'm like, what is this guy? Well, is he his broken, man. He's in oh, yeah. tone deaf yeah. He's gotta be tone deaf because the solo's out of key. Um um, and I don't know how like a, a, an engineer or a producer didn't pick that up, but it's there. Mm. Um, now, to, to be honest and to be fair, the second solo that he does mm. is in key, and it makes up for the first one. Holy shit. Um, like maybe I that's because I'm a guitar player, and so I hear these okay. things, and, and I'm surprised okay. Dave didn't pick up on this one. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I was giggling like a fucking child. <laughs> yeah, that's why. You couldn't hear it. Um, but uh, look, I, I, I think it. if it wasn't for that other key guitar solo, I would have liked this song a whole lot more. But that sort of really detracted from my overall enjoyment because I just thought, like, how has this gotten past, like, the, the, the engineer, the producer, sometimes and the band members. Yeah, but it, sometimes it might have been. Yeah, I, I yeah, it, it could be, yeah. but if it is, then they need to get a new guitar player because that would just sound woeful. Um, so look, for me, yeah, it wouldn't have. I wouldn't have gotten past that. So I, I gave it six out of ten. I probably would have had not been for that shit solo. I would have. It would have gotten at least a seven. So okay, yeah. thank right. you. So, not a bad song. Just okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Um. As I said, I'm finding it harder and harder and harder to find stuff 
that's my <laughs> really my life. It's I got right. fucking weeks worth of stuff. So like much that. music out there, Conrad. Dude, all right. so much. I'm gonna have to dig deeper, mm. dig a lot deeper. To I'll find have to start new, new through the stuff. links that I get sent to me because there's a shitload there's of links. new stuff, new stuff mm. that that makes me go, ooh, I like the sound I'll of that. Find them. Conrad Why is he not a hip hop star, dude? No, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can rap a song called "Stuff That Makes Me Go Ooh." Oh no! Okay. <laughs> I think somebody already did that, didn't they? Yeah, and and Jade did. They, they, did, they didn't have on. your English accent, um, man. That's what makes it sexy. Okay, I, Dave. <laughs> we are getting into uncharted territory for once. Um, all right, I'll go next on this one. Look. This one is riff driven straight ahead. It's it's more metal than the previous one, where the last one, uh, uh, early Star Five. This one's more of a Bay Area thrash kind of a vibe, uh, especially in the guitar work. They they did use gear changes in this song nicely, so the composition side of this was cool. Along with that, I think Jeff mentioned the gallop in there is pretty cool as well. Like, there's all those things you've heard before. They do a very good job with this sort of stuff. Um, so overall, between the pace and all that kind of stuff, there, there's some good light and shade in the song, and it fits the narrative. Lyrically as well, Dave. If you pay attention, it's not talking about a broken cock. It's talking about one. I grew up listening to Motley Crue. Motley Crue know, saw the Dave, cocks. You like <laughs> reading it too, and it's like blowing my mind that you went there because this is more about you know. I read a book yeah. from uh, Raymond E. Fice called Talon of the Silverhawk, and the treatment for this song is virtually you know the treatment for that story. It's about some guy who survives his village being wiped out. And he wants to go back and get revenge later on. That's the song. That's why there's different modes and, and moods yeah. are going on. Dude, I'm um, different. I laugh my fucking ass off reading Hannibal. No, That's well, a great book. It's hilarious. You, We're not all as twisted as you are. Um, the, and you have no idea how to live a fun life. I do, actually. But anyway, <laughs> well, Conrad We're all twisted you um, the, oh, dude, well, Conrad throws you Dude, Hey, Conrad, did that make you go, ooh? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Here we go. Um, now it's frozen. Right, the, the way... <laughs> no, no, come on, that's a hip hop look. It's a hip hop dude. Just gonna you go like take a screenshot of that. Yeah. Straight it out looks of London. too happy. Yeah, I it looks know. Too happy smiling, for a hip hop though. It'll, it'll it's it's it needs buffering through. It'll get there eventually. <laughs> um, the way the chorus on this song brought the more emotive, sort of heartbroken side go. to the vengeful energy of the know. verse was well done. Go. In the song, you are coming back to us. Um. It's a little rough around the edges sonically. I wasn't a complete fan of the mix, but it suits the band's yeah. sound. It's just a bit flat. Um, but it's funny how, yeah, like I said before, Conrad shifted from one album to the other for this band. This one's more thrashy, whereas the last time around had much more Sabbath vibes. Sabbathy. Yep. Um, nothing complicated. I did like that solo that Jeff mentioned as well. Um, I thought the solo could have cut through in the mix a bit more as well. But what I found. Interesting on this one too is that it, it's funny that yeah, like I said, the note that I've got that sort of ties on what Conrad was saying before is that I didn't think this was as good as the one from the debut album. So I don't know if the band's no. on like a I don't know what the trajectory is for him, but this song didn't grab me as much as the debut one. Yeah. That last one was great. This one was like the bar was here and you sort of landed here kind of yeah. and focus on as the I, I, I was settling for something as yeah. opposed to to uh yeah. Sorry. That's all I was, right. I was, I was settling as opposed to We will to, help to you find smashing some music. Yeah. Smashing something. There's a band next week just for Dave called The Sword. Oh, <laughs> I know the sword. the sword. I know the sword. Yeah. And until you mentioned I never thought of them as the cock, but from now on, the they're forever going to be known the as the cock. Oh, my oh, God. Dave, um, you have a one-track line stone, tonight. Stone or metal band. Oh, yeah. They're a stone rock band. Yeah, I know the sword. They're good. If you're still watching, can you help him at some point later on? Um, yeah. all right. Julia can't help me, man. I, I know. <laughs> I know. Belle, let's go to you. What did you think of the song? Uh, okay. So so just for the record, I have read through the lyrics of the song just then and they're, they're just, the sword is not a metaphor for cock. It's about a sword. I grew up listening Thank to Motley you. Crue. It is. Right, Dave, right. It's not a Motley Crue hey. song. It's a hey. Wolf Tooth song. Check out the lyrics themselves directly then. Not everything <laughs> yeah. has to be no. that one. I know it just popped in my mind and it made me laugh. You have well, cock on the brain. You have <laughs> sword that, on the so. brain. <laughs> you cock it. Yeah. Is there, well is there done, something Dave. you'd like to tell us, Dave? Is there uh, something you'd like? You want to come out the closet? Hey, you Dave? picked the song, dude. You want to come out the closet? <laughs> what the hell? Here we go. Oh, anyway, please, Bell, continue. Cock on the brain. All right, so I'll talk about the actual music. That's cock on the brain. All right. Um. Gosh. 
Is that your rap right song? Intro, the cock on the bro. All right, we're gonna let you continue, please. <laughs> All if I can, can hear is cock on the brain, cock on the brain. <laughs> yo, 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 oh, yo, yo, cock on the brain. On the anyway. <laughs> I thought the intro was great. The opening <laughs> riffs were great. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing now. All right. So, look, the first time I played this song, um, the intro immediately set me yeah. up mentally for what was to come. It was just obvious. Um but it also made me really keen to hear what kind of vocals were coming too because you never know these days. Yeah. Um, so, and they made you wait for it. It took a while for them to kick in. Mm. But when they finally came on, I thought, oh, my God, it's Aussie. Mm. <laughs> well, there's that Sabbath. It, it, sounded, yeah. it sounded like Aussie, but I actually didn't dislike this guy's voice, so go figure. Yeah. Um, this song had a great old school metal vibe. Um, the whole thing was structured well, kept me interested the whole way through, actually. Um, nice. Would I check out the whole album after hearing this? Maybe. Will I remember this song exists in a few weeks' time? Maybe. But I liked it. I thought it was a good song. Mm. So thank you, Conrad, for putting forward a song. Like that in <laughs> itself is great. Oh, ouch. Feel the yeah. burn. You know, I oh, wow. missed songs. one week. It was only one week on this. You go. This you missed now one, on. one week. This, I, give it a, I give it a six now. out of ten. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now it's on. Let's see what the com- comments have to say. Uh, Conrad says, I like it, Conrad. There's a fair bit of early Sabbath in there, which is cool. Um. But here we go. Darren's gone, damn, Santa's playing metal now, so meh. Um... <laughs> <laughs> She's an old dude like Santa. I get Hang that. on. I haven't, this is... seen, I haven't seen the, this clip either, actually. Mm. Um... Well, Lee says, insight into today's bedroom intimacy as I hold aloft my sword, have mercy for Julia. Oh. <laughs> Julia. Go. I'm not saying um... a goddamn thing. I'm in enough trouble, so... But, yeah, you are. Uh, tough, tough, <laughs> tough. Said this is beyond epic. This song has changed my DNA. Seriously, I found a new band for me, and now I'm about to look up everything about them. So there we go. Wow. That, that's Whoa. the point. Wow. Nice that is well the point. Done, One person finds it. That's what it's all about. Just finding new yeah. music people to connect with. Uh, Vinny, oh god, broken sword could indicate he suffers from relational dysfunction. I see your line of thinking, Dave. <laughs> Thank um, you, dude. And- and this it's is the why we're going to be related does. someday. No one else does. <laughs> Tough says, can't thank you enough. So there's more love for you. Um, That's fantastic. But Sammy says, I actually like this song, but you know what make it a thousand times better? Growling vocals. Um, <laughs> but if you followed that up with, you want a band with a fucked up but funny lyrics, then check out Crotch Duster. Um, so, <laughs> okay. I don't I'd know be, interested like to know what, be interested to know what Dave's... Um, Opinion is on man of war lyrics, then you know, oh, oh they're fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they, sing about, they sing about swords uh, a lot, Dave. Well, <laughs> um, Come on, um, Karen... it's, it's, it's all for 80s rock, it's a My euphemism, God. okay? Only, only for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, Come on, we'll see. We'll see. Um, if if Dream Theater ever have a song with a sword, I'm going to give it the same treatment. Um, they've yeah. got so much more class. Come on, and here we go. <laughs> They're class ass. Um, Darren's Darren's leaving us. He's gone. Have a great weekend, guys. We'll catch you the rest tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. I know we do drag on a bit, but I'm um, hopefully you do enjoy the rest. We do get to see it. Um, <laughs> tough's gone. Why is this only a Kevin Bloody Wilson tribute show? I don't know. We we'll just go where it goes. <laughs> Um, Michael's going so sword equals spade or todger, Dave. So there we go. <laughs> I'm getting right. Oh, no, it's just cock. Yeah. And Vinny <laughs> says, in all honesty, Conrad is very laid back, as we can see he lays on his futon. So there we go. Um, futon. <laughs> not a, not a, oh, here we go. <laughs> hey, now Conrad. Conrad, yeah. have you moved house or are you still? Um... No, I'm still rent- your- I'm still renting uh, my friend's uh, spare room. Yes, at yeah. the moment. Oh. Okay. Yes, because my land. laptop, oh. my laptop's in the shop, and you know I'm doing this on my phone. And, oh, yeah, still. Been- yeah. Still Have you phone. got like ice, ice behind it? Is it going to overheat this time? Uh, I don't know about overheating this time. Oh no, it is feeling warm. But, um, 
No. Oh, no. Good ice made it this time. Dude. It's not shitting itself like it did. Well, that's that's a good start. At least it's it's holding up together so far so good. All right, one more song to get through before we get to the meat of the whole show. Um, and this is my choice for the week this time around, and it's for obvious reasons. Um, once you hear what song it is, it's uh, the, the link is in the description box. It's also in the, in the chat now. Uh, it's the latest single from the Screaming Jets with a song called Second Chance. Um, they have a new album called Professional Misconduct due... October 6, I believe, um, in October 2023. Obviously, I've gone back through with the um, tragic news of Paul passing away, which I'll have something to say on that at the end of this little segment here. Um, but I wanted to give this time to the song, uh, to the band, in light of what's happened there. And as it's my choice, I'll go first on this one. Um, like I said, obvious reasons for choosing it this week. Um but somehow when you go through this song, it kind of hits even harder lyrically with everything that sort of happened in light of it all with Paul passing away. Very much a ballad, uh, something of an almost a slow dance kind of a song. Some people have compared it to Shivers. I don't quite get that vibe from it, but it does have that loaded lyrical weight going through the song from beginning to end. Um from my point of view, there's something special about bands that don't have anything they have to prove anymore and they can just do what feels right. And when they do it and they do it so well, they knock it out of the park. It just feels great to listen to songs like that. And for me, this is one of those times. Uh, the other single, Nothing to Lose from the album, is far more rocked up. This is the ballad of the two. Um, but I'm, as a consequence of the two tracks, I'm really looking forward to the album overall. I'm not going to sit here and say this is an earth-shatteringly new song or anything like that, but... It's really, it's a really well crafted songs by veterans who just know how to let a song breathe and tell its own story, not get in their own way, which is an underrated thing, I think, in this day and age when it comes to music in general. I think just getting out of the way and let the song do its thing. Those who knew Paul and his writing, I would say you'd agree maybe with me that that was one of the hallmarks of his craft when it came to his songwriting style. And he, and um, I think <coughs> Todd Kingman wrote this song in particular. Um, I love the layering of this one. Some very nice subtle panning in here. Uh, the placement of Dave's vocals is perfect for it as well. The backing vocals are bang on. You can still hear Paul with his trademark delivery um, that's so pivotal to their sound as a big part of this song. There's a nice solo in here too. Um, I like the acoustic guitar chord work under that too. The, the, the foundation for the solo was nicely put there. It's a relatively understated song, but everything just fits in its place. I think it's really nicely done. So if you like more emotive songs done well with weight and earnest, honest performances all around, then I think this is one you should check out. Regardless of the, the recent events, I, I think this is a really nice song. It's just, you know, kind of timely to to give it a run now and, and see what everyone thinks of it. Um, so next, I will go to Conrad. How'd you go? I liked this. This was nice. um, in interesting. It had a nice vibe to it. I actually got Thin Lizzy vibe. This. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the slow, the slow Thin Lizzy mm. stuff. When cool. Thin Lizzy yeah. from slower songs. This reminded me of uh, Still in Love with You, I think, and and it had, okay. yeah. yeah, it definitely had a slower Thin Lizzy vibe to it, which I quite liked. And his no. phrasing, his phrasing sounded mm. a bit like Phil Phil Linet in the in the phrasing. So I quite enjoyed this. Um, I give this, uh, yeah, six out of ten for me. I quite, I quite nice. like this. Different, cool. Um, different, but yet at the same time, still sort of. It wasn't great. It wasn't, you know, reinventing the wheel mm. or anything like yeah. that. But, but you know, it was pleasant. It wasn't. It didn't. It wasn't abrasive. That's for yeah. sure. So yeah, nice. uh, this was decent enough. Yeah, solid. Cool. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I really did. Cool. All righty, let's go to Jeff next. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, look, this is a great song. I I really really like this. I thought that the the melody and lyrics were very melancholy, right? Mm. And um, I mm. felt like they reach out and grab you, and suddenly feel like that it was a song that was written just for you. Yeah. Um, with you in mind, and and, and to do this, uh, that's an art, and these guys, mm -hmm. um. It's a difficult thing to do, and they have just, yeah, very, very um, difficult to, to bring the, the listener in and make them feel like the song, we wrote this song with you in mind. Mm. Um, now, considering the events, obviously, of the past week uh, and the loss of Paul, um, I felt the song really hit home for me, and yeah. um, it makes you want to reach out 
call out your family and friends and just tell them that you love them. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, now it's, it's sobering to think that one day um, there will be no second chances. And yeah. um, so, yeah, for anyone who's feeling that same way, yeah, just do that now. Just pick up the phone mm. after the stream, of course. Um, and um, <laughs> I'd even say now, man, I wouldn't wait, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. No, but that's yes. the thing. Uh, seriously, it, it, it's it's mm. a it's a song that I just felt, you know. It's it's sad, and I, I I'm I'm thinking back, you know, to when I met Paul, and yeah, um, you know, and and I wrote a little thing on Jimmy's page because uh, he put that. a thing up, and mm. did you see that? Yeah, that. um, I mentioned it in the stream once, but yeah, mm. um, but uh, look, I for me and everything this carries with it, and everything that's happened. I really like this song and I'm looking forward to the new album. I actually gave this 10 out of 10. Nice. Cool. Glad you liked it. And, and yeah, yeah nice choice of words there too, man. Um, we'll keep moving. Uh, Belle, your thoughts. Well, it's, <clears throat> it's just a beautiful song, isn't it? Um, mm. You don't hear ballads like this getting written anymore. Um, mm. I think only an old school band like the Screaming Jets, could pull it off yeah. and produce such a perfect example. Um, sad lyrics. The song has a really resigned mood to it. There's mm -hmm. not really any hope of a happy ending in this story that, that I can hear. Yeah. It sort of hints to it, but I just I don't think it's there. Um, mm. It's beautifully sung and there's such raw emotion in Dave's delivery. It's yep. really hard not to get choked up listening yep. to this song, particularly, um, particularly now. So, thank you, Andrew, for putting it forward. But how could you not? Yeah, mm. it's a bit of a no-brainer this week, to be honest. But um, like I said, I'll, I'll have something to say at the end of it. Um, but yeah, uh, if there's nothing else from you, Bell, we'll, we'll go to Dave next. Yeah, this was awesome. Loved it the first time I heard it and played it over and over for quite a while. Um, following on from what Jeff said, though, in reverse, if you've been holding off telling someone they're a cunt, call them up and tell them because you won't get a chance the next day. <laughs> you know, it works both ways. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, this man. is definitely cool for late That's night funny. listening with a glass of whiskey. I reckon Paul would have loved that comment, too. That's fucking fantastic. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah, he would have. He was a good guy. Fuck. Yeah. I was, I was fucking, oh what the hell yeah, I, I was i was thinking throughout the week man and andrew will know this probably the new crew won't but um the t the first time i met paul was at the hard rock extravaganza that we did and it's the, i realized during the week it was the first time i met stephen moore as well who's also no longer with us yeah. so i was just like fuck that that yeah just thinking those together that was fucked yeah. up yeah. But um, yeah, this this is good for late night listening with glass of whiskey, and yeah, the lyrics are really really well done, and they tell a story that anyone with more than a few years of life under their belt can certainly relate to. There's a lot of different things that will resonate with a lot of different people for different reasons. So it's one of those special songs that I'm sure the writer had their own um motive and experience yeah. and story that they wanted to tell but they did it enough in a good good enough way for people to be able to take their own meaning and apply it in a cathartic way that will make their life better so it's very special no. thanks for picking it man because i probably wouldn't have heard it if you hadn't no that's my pleasure that's the yeah that's yep. the point at the end of the day. Um, I knew it was coming out, just hadn't got around to it yet. And so it's just, it just felt fitting to obviously play it this week. Um, let's see. Uh, what do we got here? Jolly says, I liked it too. Uh, Man Family says, great melody, very passionate tune, great stuff. Um, Vinny says, Gleason is one of those instantly recognizable voices. Feels great to listen to them now with the admiration of many of us had in the 90s, which is too. Uh, true, sorry. Uh, Tough says, good song with a good message, which is fitting too. And Michael said, love this track, but, when, but then have never disliked the Jets track. Uh, well written and sung. Loved guitars from Scott and Jimmy. Looking forward to the album. So there we go. Um, Just on Paul, I want to take a minute to obviously acknowledge his passing away. Now, 
for those that have followed us for a while, uh, you'll know that we first sort of got in contact with him back in 2014 from memory when he had his solo album um, coming out. And I'll never forget how he introduced himself to Jody and myself. He, we, we were there to see, we, we got invited to go and see Gilby Clark do a solo show and Paul was the support act for the night. And um, he'd come in and done his, he was running around like a headless chick, like he normally to go into a gig. And <clears throat> um, he came up to Jody and myself eating dinner and he goes, just wanted to let you know that I love your show. And if you'll ever have me on, I'd be happy to be part of it. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, I'm this half wit on TV for a couple of years. And, and this guy wants to come on the show, this icon, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll make this happen. So we started connecting and talking from there. Anyone that's had anything to do with Paul, uh, from my experience, I can only speak from my point of view. And I'm going to be very careful because I don't want to make this in any way about me because the stories being shared about Paul over the last couple of days are all uniform in the things that I'm about to say as well. So I'm not more special than anyone else. I just want to make you know our experiences um, because there's a point that I'd like to make. Um, the He was one of those people that when he walked into the room, you felt the energy shift. Um, and that is so rare it's it's not even funny um the random messages you'd get from him with just constant stream of consciousness were a blast um he had a brilliant heart and the there are some things i'll never forget um from interacting with him because we didn't we weren't like fast friends but i think we were friends and it was one of those things where um him passing has really, really hurt. And there's, like I said, there's a point about that that I'm going to get to. The We bonded when we first met over things like not just the music and, and that kind of stuff. And when we, I did an interview with him and he was so, like, this is a guy who's done so much. He wanted to come on the show, um, which I thought was huge for us. But then when he sat down and, and did this massive interview with me, um, which I'll eventually get around to releasing, he was so gracious to someone who was so green at the craft. Cause I look back now and go, fuck, ask some dumb questions, but he played along, made it all enjoyable. He kept ribbing me during the interview because you have that thing where your sinus plays up you and hear yourself really loudly in one ear. I don't know if anyone else gets that, but I get that from time to time. And that kept happening during the interview. And he just kept going, have another line, Andrew. Cause I tried to sniff to clear it. <laughs> <laughs> he just fucking ribbing me on it over and over again. It was fantastic. And he said, yeah, that's where the video comes from. Um, when he covered uh, or played, uh, shit, <laughs> I think it's Helping Hand. Um, I'd have to look it up. My mind's going blank. But he did two songs that day. And one was the Jet song that everyone knows. But he also did one of his originals in Last Dream Falls from the Bombido album. And if you haven't listened to Bombido, please do, because it's a, a phenomenal showcase of one man's pure talent. Um The point I'd like to make is that, like I said, I, I feel this one. This one hurts. I've struggled with this one actually since the announcement came out. And it's like I said, seeing the other people with the same sort of stories about the guy, you just know that he's left a massive hole in the world. I've never met anyone in my life more born to be a minstrel, if that makes sense. He was entertaining, he was charming, he was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but you loved every minute that you spent with him and he made you feel like he loved every minute with you. And on top of all that, he was just such a beautiful talent. I've struggled to think of anyone that could play and sing the way he did. Everyone knows him for the bass work in the Jets and the backing vocals. When he got to stand up on stage solo or with Ro Jerry Crow or any project he could do, when the Jets made him, like he invited us out to go and see the Jets play and the Jets made him get up there and sing one of his songs, which I thought was absolutely stunning as well, just as a nod to, to him and his craft and the band. Um, and I say these things, again, not to make it about my storytelling, but because of the... If this is how much someone like me can feel the loss of someone like that, then you can only imagine how hard it is for those that are closest to him. So to um, Charlie, Tanya the kids his dogs even because he loved massive dogs just like us then and to scotty and the rest of the boys in the band that those who knew and loved him most and best our sincerest condolences from all of us here in the past and in the present because he was just a beautiful beautiful man and 
I very rarely found someone who had accomplished so much and yet was so giving and had such a lack of a sense of ego. Like he was like, he knew he was good, but he never let it become a big thing. If that makes sense. Like, yeah, I don't know. He, he was just a phenomenal human being as far as I'm concerned. So like I was saying, that's why the people that have come with the stories, if, if that's a small sample size of what it must mean for those that knew him best. So our condolences to all of you that have felt this one this week. It's, it's been hard to take. So. That's it from me. Um, oh, cheers for Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Cheers. Yeah. Um, these ones suck. So, unfortunately, yeah. the way it, it is. is. Um, but that said, he was always fun to be around. So, I think we'll continue to have the fun that we usually have, try and move on. A little bit from this one, um, and Sally's chimed in saying, rest in peace, Grimmage Jets are a killer band. Happy to see them anytime. They are a phenomenal band, and I'm glad to hear they're going to go forward with the tour as well. I don't think that Paul would have wanted anything to get in the way of that uh, from my experiences with him anyway. Um, all righty. So to keep the fun and games going, I'm going to change the vibe. Uh, we're going to move over now to Conrad's going to steal the show now and going to play us a little game of Who Am I? Now, the rules, as always, are the same. We, you, Conrad can go through, just take a brief pause after each clue you give out, um, and we'll see, we'll timestamp, like, when people, you know, get the correct guess in the comments. So feel free to guess away in the comments, but make sure you get one guess. Wait, you know, we only get one guess here. Try and limit yourself to one guess in the comments if you'd be so kind. But once we have our one guess, we are out of the running. You don't get a second shot at it. So... Without any further ado, it's time for another round of Who Am I? And Conrad, we are going over to you this week. Okay. All right. Who am I? I was born in Jamaica, September 17th, 61. Okay. After, uh, I then later in life immigrated to the US, where I hooked up with another guitar player and drummer. Um and went on to record on this band's very first ever release. Um, the song that got recorded on this first ever release was on a compilation record by, called Metal Massacre. Medical, Metal Massacre compilation came out in 1982. I recorded lead guitar for a song on this record. This album also had bands on the album. This was Brian Slagle's record yeah um, yep. and he who had metal blade i believe <coughs> metal blade mm -hmm. record That's, yeah yep. he put out a compilation in 82 with a famous band on it um other bands that included on this compilation were rat and steeler steeler being uh yingui mount mount steam's first band mm. was was steeler he, he played yep. on uh well when he was 17 it's rather impressive actually yep uh -huh. played on 17 um Although not officially uh, declared a member, he was never declared an official member of the band. Um, uh, he was then followed by another guitar player of whom um, then wrote several songs for the, for the band uh, and appeared, got songwriting credits for the first two records. Um, and then okay. he was fired and replaced. Right. But uh, I am definitely the, although not declared an official member of the band, I am appear on the band's first ever recording, um, of which is a song on the Metal Massacre compilation that came out in 82. I can give you more as we proceed, but I'd like to this see how to go with yeah. this. I've got a feeling Jeff might get this or... Uh, Maybe I'm pretty Andrew. sure I know the band. I've just got to get the name. The band, I think, let's go to fair enough to say, went on to be the biggest metal band of all time. Mm. Okay, mm. so there you go. You got the band. Yeah, I've got the band. I've just got to work out the name of who you're talking about now. Right. Um, Fuck. And no, it's not Dave Mustaine. No, I know. It's no, before it's not. It's before that. No. It's, what I'm it's trying prior to, to Dave Mustaine. Yeah. I was the guitar player. For Metallica prior yeah. to Dave Mustaine. And that's where I'm like, fuck. Oh. <laughs> I knew who you were talking about. I just can't get the name. 
For fuck's sake. Um, He's black. Not looking at Google. Okay? He's, no, black. No, I'm not He's black. Uh, yeah. There's a black fuck. guitar player. It's everyone thinks of, of you. you know, everyone can think of the bass player, Ron McGovney, but no one yeah, can think Ron of the Ron McGovney is the name that everyone can think of, but they can't think of the fucking guitarist. Shit. Yeah. Um, Bell, how you okay. going? No, I no, and I would have read I would have read about this, but yeah. I, it's not it's not it's not okay. um, coalescing I, in front of me. I read yeah. Reunited with the band for the band's 30th anniversary shows. Yeah, you fucking did. And I, I, I got the fucking bootleg too. It's pissing me off because I know it. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, oh, I honestly, I don't think I'm going to get this. Yeah. Oh. I know, I know it. I'm going to give you yeah. the slight, I'm going to give you a slight hint. Think of a famous British actor. Famous British actor that's a bumbling gent. Stephen? No, a bumbling gent British actor. Think of, of him. Rowan. Think of his last name. Oh, uh, 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 more. Bumbling, bumbling gent British actor that plays in a lot of romantic kind of oh. movies. Grant? Is, is, is he still Grant. alive? Grant. Okay, you got the surname. First name. Ah. Uh, no. Can I help? Not Ron McGovern. <laughs> Fucking no, something no, Grant. 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 I'm going to hand this to the viewers now. I'm out. I'm going to see if anyone's got it. Um, I, I think I'm out too. Grant. Ah. Oh. Grant. No. I've got my housemate no. playing along now. <laughs> <laughs> no, the only one we got is Hugh Grant in the comments so far. There's only Grant that's Hugh there. Hugh Grant. Well, Grant, you've got the surname right. Yeah. You've got to give me the first I, And I thought mine. If I was to think of Wolverine, it would be a clue. Yes. Indirectly. Oh, no, that would. No, no, no that's, that's not. No. no. What? <laughs> no, no. Who's fucking Wolverine? Jack Grant. It's not Hugh Jackman <laughs> or Hugh Grant. No, we're not after Hugh Grant. <laughs> no, no, we're not okay. after Hugh Grant. They know. All right. They're not after okay. Hugh Grant. We've got so surname. Go back to your work. <laughs> 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 Go back to doing your work. <laughs> okay. And we got this to the viewers then. Uh, yeah, I got. I got. Let's see if anyone's got it. Um, no. Oh, uh, here we go. Jolie, this... Jolie has a this... name. Uh, go just on. now. Uh, Lloyd Grant. Yes, there that sounds Lloyd right. Grant. Lloyd is Grant. There we go. Grant. I wish Congrats, I could Bob. hand out some. I wish I could hand out some prizes, but we don't. We're too tight. We're too much tied up. <laughs> having <laughs> prizes to hand out. But well done, Jolie. Lloyd Grant. Well done. Lloyd Grant was the well first done. guitar player yeah. for Metallica, not Dave Mustaine, although he wasn't declared <laughs> yeah. an official member. That's true. He and did on appear the... on the band's first ever recording, which was Hit the Light mm. on the Metal Massacre yeah. record yeah. compilation. Yeah, there's a lot on that. Yeah. That's, no, five that's a good one. You did well. That uh, was good. Uh, yeah. Nice, All man. Right. Okay. I that's, hope I didn't I make guess... it too hard. I hope I didn't make it too hard for anybody. Oh, that's oh. awesome. I like it when we get stumped. It, it, um, you definitely stopped us. I, I got everyone last week. You got everybody this week. Yeah. 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 We're going a completely opposite direction what I did the first time around. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll have to work out. Um, so it'll be Bell or Dave. Was... I think yeah. Bell or Dave will have to go next. I'll go next. All right. Oh, Bell gets next week. Well, there we go. Yeah. Bell gets next week. We'll just declare it right now. Um, okay. Nice. Good job. We got some comments here to get through, though. Quickly, Vinny says, "Here, here, awesome, Andrew. He'd be just as honoured to have known you. I would hope so, but seriously, he did the same thing." <coughs> oh. Um, Rowan says, I "Accidentally saw the Screaming Jets three times back in the early '90s, and the thing I read more than anything else uh, was that bass player's harmonies with the lead singer made were what made the band, and that is exactly right. I think it's a special combination there." Um, now we get on the what funny comments with the missing here. Here? So uh, Rowan's gone, here. wouldn't be Vernon Reed. <laughs> um, Vinny says, stuck on the broken sword, can't figure it out, cock blocks. <laughs> there we go. Um, <laughs> Sally said Hugh Tanner. Vinny said Hugh Grant. Uh, tough, there's <laughs> got the internet and I have no idea. So there we go. That's when Jolie got it right. 
Uh, but Ro- uh, Rowan's had a humorous guest, journalist, Stan Grant. Um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, but Jolly said, this is fun. And Guy said he was a black man, as I remember. So, yeah, there we go. That was what you mentioned there, too. So Very true. That's yep. how it all works. All righty. Um, we'll need to get Dave back for one last thing to get through tonight. We're actually having a bit of fun with it. We've got to do the Build a Collection run-through. Um, mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to give you guys the draft order, so hopefully you have to bear with me. Hopefully you've sort of rotated it through on your own from last week. I forgot to give you guys that draft order in, in preparation. Yeah, I didn't see it. What is the draft order? The draft order know, is I go first, thinking. then Bill, then Dave, then Conrad and Jeff. You get last this time around. Okay. <laughs> the slow, the boom. Uh, uh, don't throw a tanty now, will you? I'm not throwing a tanty. The good news, Jeff, is that you get to go first next week. If you go last this week, you go first next week. And 1980 so is a good year. Yeah. Okay. Don't go throwing your toys out the pram. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. What did Jeff pick? Nothing I yet. Didn't, I didn't. I get picked no, last. He, he, he got That's... a bit upset because he's going last this time. I didn't get upset. So... I just. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm playing because I can. Um, <laughs> Has anyone picked anything? <laughs> no, down no. Tools. no. Down tools. Waiting for you. Yeah. No, so fuck, Dave, you know the tools. draft order is me, no. then Bell, then you in the middle, then Conrad, then Jeff. That's the draft order of how this one plays out. Okay. Just rotating okay. it through from last week, so everyone gets to go first, and in, in the cyclical nature of it all. So. If someone As picks my fucking album, I'll be pissed. Be it, won't it, won't it won't be fucking me. It won't be me. I won't. I don't have a backup. No, uh, well, we'll have to wait and see. Um, want, there's a lot of good me, albums from 1979, although I think it's fair enough to say that it's not as prolific a year as the no, other years have been. I so noticed far. that. Really no, it was more of a challenging yeah. one. Still, some really good ones. It's just a little bit more mm-hmm. of a challenge. Um, but also complicating things now is the fact that we can't take the same band twice in our own individual lists. So Which I think is awesome, way, actually. That's good. It, that does yeah. make it really challenging. So you can't double up on the band in your own list. And obviously, once an album is taken, that's the end of it for that album. That album can't be taken again, too. So it just makes things a little bit more interesting because, for example, there are albums released this year from bands that i know that you know some of us would have liked to have taken but we can't take this time around which does make it you know a little bit more gives people more freedom to play with yep. things as they go around but we do have to tell up the scoring from last round first so last week bell chose van halen with the self-titled debut dave chose ace freely with ace freely uh conrad chose thin lizzy live and dangerous jeff chose judas priest killing machine and i chose andrew uh, sorry acdc power age so that one scored out interesting because fifth and fourth were a dead tie, weren't they, Bill? Uh, when you went and, yep. and collated it all together. So he couldn't split sure them. Were. So you get to divide nope. the points. So both Dave and Jeff get 15 points each for their choices last week, which means that Conrad managed to come in on third place and get 30 <clears throat> points for his choice of Live and Dangerous. <clears throat> I, I was smart with my choice, I think, because it, it helped – to keep pace with things a bit more. So I came in second with Power Age, which means, of course, as expected, Bell won with Van Halen. So that is cool. But that means that last week I was in front on 90. Jeff and Conrad were tied on 70. Dave was on 50 and Bell was on 20 points last week. This week, the new titles are as follows. Dave is now in the tail end with 65 points. Bell has jumped ahead of that on 70. Conrad is, oh, sorry, Jeff is on 85. Conrad is on 100 and I'm on Ooh. 130. So it's Ooh. it's it, okay. it evens up really <laughs> nicely as we yeah. go through things, and so I get to go first this time around. Um, and the fun part for this is that there are albums that I would have liked to have taken, but I can't because they're already artists that I have chosen. So there are going to be some options here to play with out of all this. So after going through the list and taking into account what I can't take Whoa. again kind of thing so the artists i can't get back and all that kind of stuff i'm going to take for my choice this time around i'm going to go with pink floyd the wall that is going fuck. to be my- <laughs> bollocks <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck that is my choice my for this one around i've got a list that here. look something up certainly yeah, good choice pick. there's there's 50 points i you didn't yeah. write that down because i, I knew out ahead. it was going to be gone I don't know. Yeah. We'll see because there's some other cracking albums in this year. And Bill, you get to go next. Okay. Well, I'm I... going to pick my something favorite album. Now. Well, something weird's happening with Conrad. 
He's trying to search at the same time as as being on the stream. It always happens when you use your phone at the same time. It's gone <laughs> all janky. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So look, I'm going to choose um, my favorite Kiss album, Dynasty. Ah. Whoa. Thank you very much. Nice. Interesting. I think. Yep. I Your all time favorite Kiss album. Yes. Yes, it, yes, it is. Okay. Wow. No disco I'm album. Yep. Yeah. It's not a disco album. There's one <laughs> disco song. Well, one it's not, disco we've song. done this debate to death. We're not going to yeah. get right into that. But it's but it's it's cool that you've chosen that one, Bill. That's an interesting choice. So nicely yeah. done. So Dave, that means you get third crack at this. So where where are you going to go? Uh, you took the wall, and I can't pick Black Rose because I already picked Finn Lizzie, yep. and Black Rose should be picked, but. I'm going to go with my favorite ACDC album, Highway to Hell. Best Bon Scott album ever done. Fuck, that's a good album. So, yeah, Highway to Hell. That is a great choice again. So, there we go. All righty. Um, Carl, you're up, Carl. Yeah, Conrad's going to hit a, a bit of a snafu here. There are some There are some options. Dude, great albums. Yeah, yeah. Just pick Overkill, Motorhead. <laughs> well, there's that old bomber. Um yeah. yeah, which one's yeah. better? I mean, they're both good. They're yeah. both great. Like, if you could make an amalgamation of the two, fuck, that'd be a ripper, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. That'd be tough. There's some cool ones in there, though. Like, I don't think Conrad has taken Thin Lizzy yet, has he? He did. He picked yeah. Life and Dangerous. Oh, yeah, he did. Dangerous. Yeah, Life he did. Yeah, so, Jeff, if you don't pick Black Rose, I'll be very disappointed. <laughs> um, Setting you up, dude. Look, I like that, um, but I don't think yeah. it's their most iconic album. But there's other ones too, like oh, I don't you? know. No. Yeah. yeah, you got Van Halen two. You're gonna drive me to like, drink, man. No, Queen Life Van, Killers. Van Halen two is not a great album. I don't care what anyone says. I don't says. think it's a solid one. I no, agree. No. That album fucking sucks. That yeah. hurt a bit. <laughs> but there is there is one album here that I would have almost taken if it wasn't for Pink Floyd Wall because I know that it's one a cool album, but too a lot of people love it. Um, I'm gonna but... choose something. Oh, sorry, is it my go? Yeah. It's yes, your it go. Okay. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this fits into the the, the rock metal genre. Doesn't have hard to. Rock metal I chose genre. Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go with Police, the first Police record, which ah. was 1970. Oh no! I fucking hate Regatta Sting. De <laughs> Regatta de Blanc, I believe. I oh. Think no, oh, I love the police. Fantastic. Do you know the yeah. worst thing about the police? They were successful oh, yeah. enough for Sting to be allowed to have a solo career. They fucking suck. Regarda oh. de Blanc is the one you're thinking of for '79. Yeah. Wow. Regarda de Blanc, first okay. police record. I love the police. I think they're a fantastic band. They're an incredible band. Oh, Dude, man. I was just starting to like you, man. Big fan of the police. <laughs> now I've got my work cut out for me here. I... All right. Well, this does make it interesting. So, um, this is going to be interesting. So that means that Jeff, you have the last call. Which way are you going to go with this one? <laughs> I tell you what, like the, uh, the list that I wrote. Yeah. Um, it's still. It, it's all available. Wow. So I, yeah. I, yeah. Pick, pick your top. I tried list. to pick for me what I thought would be the strongest ones and I didn't think to be honest I didn't think about I, I didn't know what the order I was going mm -hmm. didn't definitely didn't think I was gonna go last um but uh as it turns out I have my pick now yeah didn't lose a great album but I don't think it's their most iconic album oh it's just not mm -hmm. you know um I mean what album has the uh, the boys are back. What's that? Um... Oh, fuck off. It's a single. Who cares? <laughs> Don't be mainstream, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, this is okay. That's you've upset Dave uh, now. Now look, you've gone and done. <laughs> fucking yeah. mainstream yeah. singles. Now look, you. Wow. All right. Well, anyway, Jeff, you have your list. Okay. I do. Look, I, 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 if I was to narrow my list down, it would be um, definitely Motorhead would be there. Yeah, Led Zeppelin <clears throat> into the outdoor. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, great album. Uh, but I think I'm gonna go with. Um, 
I think I'm going to go with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Damn the Torpedoes. Wow, cool. Ooh, good. I love Tom Petty. Fantastic. Yeah. Damn the Torpedoes has got Refugee. I mean, it's fucking awesome. Yep. Yeah. Tom Petty seriously underrated. Don't do me like that. Yep. Yep. Wow. Love Tom That's Petty. cool. Yeah. All right. So to recap, I chose Pink Floyd The Wall. Bell chose Kiss Dynasty. Dave has Ace of AC Highway to Hell. Connor has Police Regarded to Blunk. And Jeff has Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Damn the Torpedoes. It's an interesting mm. list. Interesting list. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. tell you what I nearly went with when regard to now that everyone's choice is locked in. Yeah. Judas Priest, Unleashed in the East, came out that year. Mm. Mm. I thought that of that, a, but then I, I thought, mm. yeah, like it a strong it's live, right, you know? Yeah, well. Yeah. I, know. Live I, picked live and, I picked live and yeah, dangerous. Yeah, I suppose that's true. I, I didn't mm-hmm. think of it at the time. Yeah. But there we go. It's going to be mm-hmm. interesting. So that one, that one goes out on the social posts as it comes through. Let's go here. Um, there we go. Back onto Paul for a second here. Lee says, fondly remember Paulie's early slide at the Teatro's end of year extravaganza at the Croxton in 2016. All class. Speaking of all class, he even waived his fee on that oh. gig for us too. Really? Episode. Yeah, he waived his fee. That's that's one of those oh, things that I, I was there. Publicized. Yeah, I was there. You know? He played out but, in the in the in the foyer or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah we had yeah, room yeah. for that one. Yeah, yep. that was a special yeah. shot too. Like he was. I, I've actually got that on video. I'd have to dig it up, but I've got it. Yeah, wow. I, fil- I filmed it. Please yeah. do, man. If you'd be so kind, that'd be awesome to. to I, I, will, I it would be saved in my uh, Google somewhere. Yeah, nice. um, awesome. Yeah. You know, other album that would have, I, I was seriously considering mm-hmm. uh, was, uh, and I, it, it kind of fits. It's, it's some people consider it maybe one of the greatest grunge albums of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it came out in 1979, and it was called um, Rust Never Sleeps. Oh, you know, yeah. 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 It's not grunge. Yeah, it's, con- <laughs> it, it, it's considered grunge, even though, I mean, it's sort of backward. It's not grunge, but that's what people consider it. <laughs> well, there we go. I, I know. So I'm I mean, I'm like, you know. laughing at a comment. Um, there's some, there's some cracking ones. Like, there's even things like the Angels No Exit came out that year as well. Yep. Um, UFOs, Queen Strangers Life. in the Night. Yeah, Queen UFO, Life yeah. came out that year. So there's, a, there's a lot there to White Snake Love Hunter. Yeah, that's it. Yep. That one came out too. Another there's some one. Yeah. Hawkins came out that year as well. Like, there's a whole lot. There was a lot. It's just not those yeah. iconic albums that you'd like to hold the space for. <laughs> for something later on um what have we got here guy says excellent choice that could be for any of us i think uh vinny says just a visual observation if jeff had a pair of overalls on holding a spanner would be a strong resemblance (laughs) to super mario and his bright cat (laughs) i don't know on actually like it looks really bright but in person it's it's more of a rust Mm. It's supposed to be rusty orange, but on for whatever reason on camera, it looks like I'm wearing yeah some weird. Uh, and this is the comment I laughed at before. Rowan said the audio quality here isn't great, and I thought Andrew said he waved his feet. No, it wasn't his feet; it was his fee. If he wanted to wave his feet, he could have done though, because there was nothing that bloke couldn't do. Um, and Tuff says this is not going to work. Let's get some common ground here. We all hate Nickelback, right? Right? Not going to nope. happen. I don't. Nope. It doesn't. So I like Nickelback. They're very good at what they do. While well, the wind decides yeah. to come now, for whatever reason, it's been a thirty-six degree day up here. Still is all shit, and now the wind decides to go. Hello, it's like all right, cool. Um, all righty, we have one more bit of order, a bit of business to get through tonight, and that is the King of the Riff round six. We are getting toward the pointy end of things now because. Yeah, there's only three rounds left after this one, so it's time to get on and start getting closer to finding our winner from the overall thing. So this week, it is Amana Mars, Twilight of the Thunder God, going up against Dimmu Gear Death Cult Armageddon. That is what, what went through last going. week. What went through last week? Nightwish, I presume. Yes. yes. Obviously. Nightwish got through last week. Yeah, um, that, does, that doesn't surprise me. No. Yeah. So there are links Good in album. the comments. And the description box, as always, to reference tracks of both these albums. Um, but yeah, we're going to see how this one plays out because I'm not sure which way this is going to go. Because stylistically, we finally got another interesting pairing to go through. So, first cab off the rank is Bell. Over to you. Which way did you go on this one? 
All right, look, I'll just get straight to it um, and tell you who I'm voting for. I'm not going to yeah. beat around the bush here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to vote for Dimu Bogger. Nice. And... Demon Burger. Demon Burger, <laughs> yeah. Demon Burger. Yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah. I'll explain was... why. Yeah, please. I'm on a master album I thought was good. Yep. They have some cool riffs, great moments. But I found that for the most part, they were just moments in what was mostly just solid and well yep. executed, but ultimately quite samey, samey kind of music. Um, I found some of the songs almost boring at times and definitely repetitive. I couldn't tell you <coughs> what song was what even after multiple lessons. Um, wow. There were two songs that, I really enjoyed from start to finish mm. um, and that, that made me think, wow, these are really cool rather than just a thought popping into my head with other songs, um, like just, you know, moments that would call here and there like a riff or a solo, for example. Um, mm. The vocals I thought were fairly uninspiring, like they were well done, but I didn't feel moved by them at all. Um, it's highly... Possible if the vocals were different, they would have lifted mm. the music somehow. But okay. they were just, you know, they were just flat, like they were just the same all the way through. There was no mm. variation in them. So it just got a bit boring and I thought it really just drags the music down and makes the music, like instead of making the music pop, it just, for me, it just brought everything kind mm. of down. So, um wow. But, uh, yeah, I think that might be the problem with this album and this band for me. They just don't make me feel much of anything at all. Whereas uh, Demi Demon Burger, um, <laughs> I, felt, I felt lifted. Oh, no, yeah. I can't see it otherwise now. I know. Um, yeah, they just, uh, like, listening to that album just kind of made me feel something. Like, I, I felt... Um, lifted like the way only music you're genuinely enjoying can lift you. Mm. So I enjoy every moment on their album. Um, I'm never bored listening to it, not for a second. There's diversity in their music and each song is unique um, and even diversity within each of their songs. So that just keeps me constantly engaged. Um, I prefer more the more complex and varied songs of mm -hmm. Dimu um over a Monomarx album. Um, and writing all this up earlier, the question popped into my head, would I have made the same choice a year ago or even six months ago before I got exposed to, or more accurately, before I learned to appreciate bands like Dream Theatre and other prog mm. bands? Possible, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, hmm. maybe not. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll never know. But, yeah, I did think about that for a while and didn't have a, an answer, so that was fun. Um, so I know I'm sounding harsh. I did enjoy a Monomass album, I, like I did, hmm. but I just wasn't excited by it. And oh, I even I saw so these guys at Knotfest as well. Hmm. Um, and I... I think I stood and watched for a few songs and I think I was more entertained by the crowd antics. Um, okay. They were like row, rowing or I don't know. They were doing yeah, something. Yeah, <laughs> very cool um, things. Yep. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, that's fun. And then I probably went to the, got a drink or something. But I just wasn't gripped by what was happening um, with their music. So, yep. Timu, all the way for me. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Well, okay. that's one vote in. Let's go to Conrad for the rebuttal, if any. Um, I mean, I'm not really a fan of either of these bands, to be honest. Mm. So it's a bit hard <laughs> for me because, like, both of them are just meh, not really my thing. Musically, I suppose Demu Bugier have more going on. <laughs> yep. Um, probably a lot more going on musically. So I guess they get it due to the musicality, although I loathe what they're about with yep. a passion. Um, so yeah, I suppose they, they get it out of musicality being that they're a more musical band. So I'll give them wow. that. Oh, 
But oh, wasn't I wasn't expecting that. Something I wouldn't buy. It's something I wouldn't support. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's my, fine. My faith, my faith would like to. I'd like to see them petrol bomb, petrol bomb, <laughs> <laughs> burn them, burn them alive at the yeah. stake. Yeah, it's what but, you uh, do to a bread burger. You cook it. To yeah, a stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> burn them alive at the stake. So yeah. Um, um, Bronze yeah. Memories. I, you know, but I mean, I'm not really fond of uh, either of these two bands particularly. I've seen uh, Amon and Marth a few times live. Um, they're always entertaining, but like you said, uh, it's more about the. I, I guess the, the crowd is is you know makes it makes it quite entertaining. You know, okay. Them. So there you go. Yeah. Look, take your so pick on this one. You would have seen the same gig that I was at, Conrad. I just remembered that. I, I was there. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I was actually, I, I saw them, I've seen them a couple of times over the years, but I know that at Bloodstock, that's where the whole rowing thing started. Uh, yeah. The whole rowing mm-hmm. thing started from Bloodstock and then it went around the world, you know, so it just took okay. off. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, your vote like goes fun. to uh, Dimu for being more interesting. Hmm. Yeah, Dimu get it for being more in- musically interesting. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's an upset. I was not wow. expecting you to pick them, man. No, it was not. Oh, no. I just well, thought as a def- default, I don't like, you'd go I okay. don't like Cookie Monster Metal particularly yeah. at all. But the whole satanic like, thing, I'm really shocked. Yeah. And, well, that's right. That's And that's another reason I wouldn't particularly, you know, I, I loathe the whole satanic thing. Yeah. With a oh, the thing but, is, I'm, I'm, but it's it's cool on the flip side. But that you're I will sort of... say it on yeah. a musical grounds. Yeah. If we're looking at this on musical grounds, then therefore I have to say on musical grounds, Demu will get it on musical ground. Oh, okay. Putting my faith, great, putting my Conrad. faith, putting my faith aside, yeah, which is very growing. difficult, incredibly oh, difficult man. to do, no, and but, not but that, but to be to be to just to give you some flowers, here, man. I really appreciate and respect that you've you've done yeah. that. That that's really powerful stuff, man. So well done. Yeah, it's not yeah, easy. Yeah, doesn't mean I'm going to listen. I'm going to. I'm not going to no, probably listen. To I wouldn't expect hurry. you to enjoy it or anything like that at all. But just the yeah, just exactly. the, that objective yeah. it's, it's really impressive. It's like so. asking, it's like it'd be like asking a black person or a Jewish person to listen to a Nazi skinhead band. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? I get it. I get it. But that's yeah. why it makes it because yeah. I do understand and yeah. appreciate it. That's why yeah. it's you know all the more yeah, impressive. So they get it on yeah. a musicality, of course. Well, well, hang on. And was, wasn't there an album you refused to listen to so the other band went through at some wasn't point? Wasn't that Merciful there's Fate? Of, there's I loads think. of bands. There's loads of bands yeah. I refused well, to Wasn't listen it to. Merciful Fate you refused to listen to so the other band went through by default? Well, I know the stuff. You see, the thing is I know the stuff because I've been subject to it. Mm. So I'm, I've been subject yeah, to a lot of stuff. Okay. Subjected okay. to it. Yeah, uh, I've seen a lot of these bands live because they've been on festivals that I've been at. Mm. So I've witnessed them and seen them. So, you know, I can say, oh, okay, I've checked them out and I've had a look and I've gone, eh, okay, but maybe not been particularly too enthralled about what they're about. So, mm. you know, probably go off to okay. the bar. Well, but yeah. even in this context, if, if you know, we're at this point now where, yeah, it's, 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 well, I have to go on musical grounds, yeah. don't I? I have to go on musical yeah. grounds. So on musical grounds, they're more musical. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. All fair play. Um, um, yeah, awesome. All right, Good. Dave, let's go to you. Right. Wow. Okay. Now, a few months ago, I probably wouldn't have appreciated either of these bands. Mm. And then we reviewed Septic Flesh. And that seems to be my gateway into this heavier black metal type of thing because that album was fucking Changed fantastic. Then, hasn't it? That was a big deal, that album. That was a big fucking gateway to me because yeah. that album, I was expecting something and I got it and then within the first minute, it changed yep. and it opened up a massive pathway within my brain and it's like, holy shit. And a lot of bands have been more coherent after hearing that album. That's a fucking very special album for me. So it's been a serendipitous pathway. It's been an interesting year. Um, Amon Amaf, Twilight of the Thunder Gods, which is an amazing fucking album, which I heard maybe a month ago when we were on hiatus. I tried to mm. get ahead. And recently, listening to it while doing Uber Eats and forgetting to turn my phone off and walking <laughs> into Red Rooster while listening to Viking Metal is fucking awesome. <laughs> turn heads. People just kind of stare at this like long-haired metalhead Walking into Red Rooster, like chicken. 
<laughs> tell, yes. tell me, Dave, Thank did you have your delivery bag with you? Yeah. I don't use the bag. Fuck that shit. <laughs> anyway, fantastic combination of heavy and melodic. The vocals are amazingly coherent, which is awesome, considering most of the lyrics put you straight into Lord of the Rings territory. Mm. Interesting comparison because the singer from Demur Booker is also a Lord of the Rings character. So it's like they're fighting against each other. <laughs> Stories are fun. The riffs are killer. And they often have a lot of groove. I wasn't expecting it to be so fucking rhythmic. Mm. The solos are amazing and the composition is never boring. Now, these songs make you want to conquer your neighbor's land. At the very least, your local red rooster. <laughs> and then we have Demur Booker. I can never pronounce this fucking name. Let's go Demon Burger, man. That'll work. Demon Burger, Demon man. Burger. <laughs> I'm listening to these albums throughout the week. At first, I thought this was going to be an easy win for a Monomath. And then this other amazing album comes on. I've listened to this fucking so many times since we reviewed it months ago. Mm. That was my first introduction to this band, and I was blown away by how good that fucking album was. And the vocals get more and more coherent with each listen. I've always mm-hmm. struggled with the heavier vocals, but it's getting more and more um, acceptable it's, 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 for me. Yeah. And I can, yeah. I, I can actually hear what they're saying now. And there's new layers within the music to discover. That album is amazing. I would love to get the isolated streams just to hear what each individual instrument is playing because mm. it is holy shit insane. Yeah. And the, the, the blending, what they did with the metal elements and the orchestration, it's insane. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the Amon Marf lyrics are played tongue in cheek. The whole "I am an evil man" shit. It, <laughs> in the hands of a lesser vocalist, it would be very, very lame. Mm-hmm. Whereas the uh, Demur Burger, Demon Burger, they're playing it straight face with the whole satanic shit, which is fucking pathetic. The whole Satanism shit is pathetic, but it's entertaining as hell. I love it. I used to mm-hmm. freak people out in high school by doing shit like that, but we all know it freaks me out. Still yeah. freaks me out today. <laughs> it freaks you out, man. But fucking, re- okay. I'm sorry, man. But God freaks me out because of the fucking. I can go on and on about it, but the way you feel about Satanism, I feel about Christ. Okay, we won't go there, but we're on the same <laughs> level. Just yep. oh, you're At both times, I'm level. leaning towards a modern math because they have some killer guitar riffs that I would love to learn to play. And as much as I love the complex arrangements and orchestration of what Dem- Demon Burger do very well with Death Cult Armageddon, it's cool to have straight up metal album like a Modern Math. Mm. But then Demon Burger have done such an amazing job of bringing this all together in the most brutal and fun possible way. I was really conflicted. Both albums are fantastic, and I want to spend a lot more time with each album and both bands. These are the first albums I've heard from both bands, so it's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm. Ultimately, there needs to be a decision that it came down to one thing. One thing. Wow. No fear for the setting sun has a fucking awesome guitar solo, and the use of the wah pedal is amazing. So, Amon Amarth wins. Wow. Simple as that. <laughs> okay. Oh, I didn't think it was going to go that way. I did not no. think it was going to go that way. Um, I could not find a way to separate it. I had to go with something, and just, that, that guitar solo is cool. All right. <clears throat> yep. Well, we're going to be seeing how this goes because I'm going to go next, which means Jeff's going to decide how this plays out again. Right. As, and I'm yeah. randomly drawing this too as we go through. I'm, I'm just sitting here randomly drawing it. So I'm going to go next. Third um, time. We'll see. That? Um, That's the third time in a row, I think, at least. Yeah, so it goes I last. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, lucky last. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't well, mind. It, yeah, I don't, no, I don't mind. I don't mind. Play it out. But for me, on this one, it, it's nice to get back to a stylis- stylistically appropriate battle. Like these two, both hard and heavy albums, you know, they both have their place in this sort of stuff. One, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they both deal in mythology. So, you know, that's what it is for me. Um, both are big on their respective themes. A Monomath is firmly in the Viking or Nor- Norse world, which makes for some very interesting lyrics. Um, that said, on the I'm on a math side of things, I think the lyrics are done really damn well. Uh, you get the full story in these songs for me. It's hard to do this sort of stuff without it being too cheesy, which, you know, that comes down to execution. I think they did a really, really good job of that for me personally. But what this band have on top of that is groove and loads of it. Now, they're, they're, 
plenty of growl, plenty of rumble. Like there's, you know, never fear about it being too melodic or anything like that. But there's also something about it that it feels fun, which means you can imagine. I haven't seen a Monomath live, but I can imagine I've seen the footage. Like you going to an Amon Math show would feel like going to a party. And so people getting drunk and running yep. on the ground would be fucking hilarious. And that would be just something you can, mm-hmm. you can listen to these songs and, and see that happening. There's a, there's a fun feel and attachment to this style of music. There's almost a hook element, which I hear. I, it's, it's funny that Bell didn't, you know, sort of remember the songs, but I can hear the hooks in these songs in my head from yeah. the Amon Math album um, quite clearly. And, in that context, a lot of these songs, I think, with a huge audience chant, would just go off in the live setting when you when you're listening to it. It's almost like the amount of art stuff. It's almost like Five Finger Death Punch meets melodic death metal. It's just some of the tones from the Five Finger side of things, and amount of art I seem to cross over. And I think that's really really cool for me to have that tonality and that aggression in this sort of slightly more old school side of things, which is cool. There's great swing, which they utilize well on their stuff. It's really hard to go past that side of it. And the melody is purely in the guitars on the amount of art stuff, but it's that alongside the pitch growling really does suit the style overall. Um, mm-hmm. There's some great, really tasteful solos in it. Uh, nothing in that album is particularly overcomplicated. It's incredibly well done. It's easy to see why it is so popular just for the conference, just for context here. It's the number two seed. Um, in, in all this sort of stuff. So it's the second most popular choice. But that, so there's still plenty of darkness in it. The, the, if you dig a bit deeper into the album, it can get pretty bleak um, and intense. It's fiction, but the storytelling is nailed by the delivery. The tempo changes make the album breathe. There's nice um, depth overall, to, which keeps from being you know taxing. It's easy to repeat to listen to for me. And to that end, the space is used well as well, the, especially in how they let the guitar take the center of your attention with the melody. Um, not a lot of bands do that where the, where the, the pitch growl is sort of relatively monotonic, but the, um, but the guitar melody being able to come in and take the center stage is just really nice. It, cha- it A lot of these albums just pound you for the sake of it, and I don't like that. When they can break it up a bit, mm-hmm. it makes it interesting and engaging. Listen to it, makes the album easy to get through and go back to over and over again. For yeah. Amon Amarth, it was brutally and infectious. It's hard not to be nodding along and tapping along uh, or, or, you know, dreaming about asgard while listening to it um it's a real pump you up kind of an album and it's very accessible to i reckon it could be a sneaky sort of a gateway record to a lot of this sort of stuff um but yeah the composition the note choices all those things just made me really enjoy it now for me it was one of those albums that got better on every single spin it's a really impressive album from the band and another one that i need to dig deeper into but on the flip side of all this you've got demon boogie or demon burger as we're calling it now <laughs> which we're going to get a lot of hate for that but i don't care um as dark as I'm on a Marth wish they could get, that's like <laughs> I'm gonna be right. <laughs> that is like daylight compared to what you know Dimu Bogir are capable of. Yeah. This just oozes evil, and I love that about it. <clears throat> it's blasting, it's intense, it's driven, it's just outright nasty. No clean vocals across these albums, really. Um, this one is just meaner of the two, though. Um but it's funny how overall both of these albums thematically lean into death and the afterlife, but this one has a lot more of an ethereal feel to it, more so than the Amon Amarth one. Amon Amarth feels present and fun. This one just feels actually like, you know, something pretty dark and evil. Um, Dimur Bogir do it in a more serious way. It, it's an almost, almost religious experience to listen to it the way they intend you to do it. Like you can imagine... Um, hmm with the orchestral kind of work in there, there's a grandness to it. A Monomath feels at home in great sort of mid-sized venues or at a festival. De Gear, you can well imagine being suited to a big choral amphitheater or even, dare I say it, a church. Just the visual setting of that music would work interestingly in that context. I did mention the lack of clean vocals, but there is a difference with De Gear because I do have some clean vocals, not many, they're very sparing, but in the context of the album, they're utterly stunning. They really bring something special to the listen. Wow, that wind is going off. Um, I hope it's not coming through too badly behind me. Um, it's coming oh, through. I, I didn't it. know what that was. I but... thought it was coming wow. from Conrad because he was he still yeah, was some yeah. weird. No, it's, it's just the wind around. getting jiggy <laughs> with it. Wow. Yeah, no, it's interesting. It's just the wind kicking off now. Um, but look, the, the clean vocals, while there's not a lot of them, those along with 
yeah. the things like the composition and the orchestral stuff really does just to con- continue to expand the epic feel of the album. The flow from track to track is seamless. Uh, it somehow manages to go from symphonic to almost Fear Factory style of music in you know, remarkable ease, and it all just fits together. Just as seamless is the the switch between English and what I assume is Norwegian. Everything is clear. Um, it's so it's nothing to do with unintelligible lyrics. It's just the whole vibe. Like they just managed to make everything really smooth and easy. This one has some cool groove as well. Not as much as a Monomath, but there is some cool groove in there. Um, but when it kicks in, it's really energetic and damn cool. The the gear changes are important across this one as well. And there's some very cool use of samples in the Dimilbu Gear album. Uh, just another one of the many layers that went into making this record what it is. It's got choral elements, a bit of gallop. This has it all, um, but it's far less of a gateway album than the Amon Amarth album as far as I'm concerned. bit of ear candy in there. It's really one hell of a well-executed album. Uh, both of these are great, and it's a really hard ooh, battle ooh. to choose between the two for me personally. Um Inside the Dimmu Big Ear album, there's some real beauty inside the bleakness, which is an interesting contrast, hard to pull off well. <clears throat> um, when they want to swing, they go hard. It, it's just really, really good. Long story short, this album is as captivating to me, if not more so, as it was when we listened in the earlier round. Like, this actually is one of those ones that grows on you more and more as time goes by. It's taken me a lot of really enjoyable spin to both of these ones to even come close to making a decision. And even as I sit here and I made my notes and I'm still hitting now, I could toss a coin. I'd be happy. Like I would really be happy either way, but yep. I think both these albums are brilliant from top to bottom. I mean, it when I say that I'll be happy, which everyone goes through, but I'm curious again, if I'm going to be the kiss of death, because I have been so far, in this battle series, whichever one I voted for is lost. So I'm going to see how this one goes. Both of these are epic. Um, in both, everything is incredibly well executed from top to bottom. They're both incredible listens. For me, this just came down to the simple fact that one album is one you can put on any time and enjoy it. Whereas the other one, I feel like you need to be more in a particular mood to enjoy it. And while I'm enjoying listening to both of them, there's one that I'd probably gravitate toward more for because it was just easier to put on more often. Um, this one's got really fuck all in it for me. This is like splitting hairs between the two. So I am going to be happy either way. But my choice for this one around is the one that was a little bit more fun for me and more of an album for all seasons. So for me, Amon Amarth gets my vote for this wow. one. Which up. Well, and, uh, <laughs> so, Jeff. Here we go. <clears throat> so I'm going to hand it over to Jeff and I'm going to mute my mic because this wind fucking nuts. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Also, I might cut out. I might. Uh, as You're you doing said, some weird, move. funky chicken shit going on there, man. Yeah. 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 Switching that, so I might die. It might die. All right. So. If you did, you want to put anything in the bin quickly before you do Fuck. get cut off, or no. I'll just I'll just stay on until I die. Okay. But yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> right. I'll die. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Jeff, take us home. <laughs> All right. So a modern Marth, uh, Twilight of the Thunderguard versus. Uh, Demon Burger, uh, Death Cult Armageddon. So I have to start this review by saying uh, this album review of um, I'm on a Marth, uh, Twilight of the Thunder Guards, coming right out of the gate and saying that I have never been a massive fan of a Man of Marth. Now that isn't to say that they aren't good, uh, but I suppose that is it is a sound. Um, it well. It's not so much their sound to me, it's their subject matter. Um, Vikings. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Hollywood's portrayal of Vikings and the in popular culture. It's cool, uh, but as a topic, I don't think it's near and dear to my heart. And as a result, I struggle to relate. Uh, But having said that, I do think this album is pretty damn good. Now, is it just me? Or can another band be heard here? In flames, anyone? Uh, certainly not in topic, no. but in sound. Yeah. I, no. I, some, some might think I'm smoking it, but I don't think so. You are. When I close my it's, eyes, I can no, hear it. I can hear the, the old Gothenburg sound. No. Yeah. I don't yeah. That and, at all. and the halo effect, which are trying to replicate that era. I, I can I, hear I it, get but it. I don't like, like I said, it. it. I, no. Yeah. I don't I think it's it. it's in the topic or it's not in in what they're singing about. 
<clears throat> but I think, you know, is, is it a coincidence that, <clears throat> excuse me, In Flames is also from Sweden? I don't think so. No. Uh, maybe there's something in the water down there or up there. Um, now, I have to say that I love In Flames, and by way of comparison, they seem less of a one-trick pony to me, uh, not limited to themselves to just one one subject or topic. And I don't think the same can be said about a modern Marth. And I think that that's kind of ho what's holding them back in my opinion. Now, this is what they're going for. This is the vibe. So for them, it works perfectly. Um, I think the music itself, um, the entire band here is at top notch. Uh, they're, they're, they're all firing on all cylinders. Uh, you couldn't really split hairs when it comes to their music. Uh, the music is just great. From the opening notes of the title track, Twilight of the Thunder Guard, it's a sonic feast for the senses. Every instrument is played with a level of experience that just shines through. The production here is also top-notch, but it's not perfect. Uh, there were a couple moments during some of the songs, <clears throat> like Where Is Your God?, uh, in my opinion, uh, the production on that song got a little muddy with the layering of the vocals. Uh, but that, once again, comes down to a personal taste, and I don't think that's a criticism. Um, the cello in the song um, Live for the Kill was a moment where I, I really think the music was allowed to breathe, and it added to that epic feeling, and it really drew me in. Uh, and because of that, I think this that is my favorite song on the album. Um, the album closes as strong as it opens with Embrace the Endless Ocean. Uh, the guitar riffing here is simple, uh, but very effective. Um, now, good music doesn't have to be complex to be great, Dave. Um, hey, now, I said can... that earlier. <laughs> when we did my skin, I said that you know, it didn't have to be I know, I know, I know, I know. But I wrote this before I heard, read your review. Um, yeah, well, you, you know, what's the show, man? I've mentioned that plenty of times. But... Well, I know. I'm just saying. But look, there's okay. no, there's no mistake. Cheap shot, that, cheap shot. It's not a cheap no. shot. Um, it's a cheap shot. Okay, cheap. Um, <laughs> there Play can nice, be no mistake. Play nice. Yes. I am. Well, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, you know, I started, I took the first shot. Um, there can be no mistaking that these guys are great at what they do. And the fact that they have gained uh, massive popularity to the influence of TV shows like Viking, um, uh, Vikings, I should say, is a testament to their greatness. Uh, and Norseman's Viper. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah, probably is. Um, Funny. I, I think The Last Kingdom is better than all of them. Um, I, I think that is to the credit. Uh, they're from they're from Sweden, and it adds a sense of genuineness uh, that really can't be faked. Uh, the topics that they write about are is really actually part of their culture, and it plays a big role in how they come across to people. This is an album that I'm sure will continue to grow on me as I listen to it more and more and more stuff from their catalog. I hope that their other material impresses me as much as this album did. I really liked what I heard here. Vikings may not be one of my personal favorite topics, uh, uh, but I have to admit uh, what they do, they do probably better than anyone else. Demon Burger, Death Cult Armageddon. Now, having reviewed this album only a couple months ago, I looked back at my review and I thought, well, what can I write about them that I didn't actually cover uh, before? And so that was a bit of a challenge. So, I touched a few things, but you'll see. Having reviewed this album only a couple months ago and having listened to it uh, a few times since, my opinion really hasn't changed. I said it then, and I'll say it again. Uh, this album to me seems more like a film score than just an album of music. What's heard here from, be from the beginning notes of Allegiance through to the unbelievable epic song Progenies of the Great Apocalypse uh, until the final sounds of, of Heavenly uh, Perverse is something special. I find it difficult to nail this down. I, I think that uh, that's probably because I've heard a lot of music in my life and nothing quite like this uh, as, as viewed as a whole. Individually, I think the songs are fantastic, but listened to as a, as a, uh, a part of a larger tapestry of the entire album, it almost feels like the album is a concept album. And yet, well, I feel there's a cohesion here 
tying all the songs together into a single story, I couldn't find anything online that corroborated this theory. And so it may just be all in my head. But regardless, I think that this album stands alone in their entire catalog of work. Yes, Dimmu Borgir, or Demon Burger, as we've been calling it, have released some absolute bangers during their career. But this album, in my opinion, stands head and shoulders above all of them. This week's battle is actually a lot closer than it looks. I think both bands are in top form here. Neither band is holding anything back. But one of them shows that the writing prowess uh, seldom seen or heard in their respective genres. I think that one of these bands has just found a way to allow the, the genre that they're in uh, to just be completely seamless. Uh, and, and they've really taken it to the next level. Um, so I came into this battle not knowing where it was, uh, where what I was going to get. I didn't know by listening to, um, you know, Amon Amarth, um, what I was going to get with that because I, like I said, they've never really been one of my favorite things. I was very familiar with one band and almost completely unfamiliar with the other. So I had to keep an open mind and, and be sure not to just hold on to preconceived ideas. Keeping it fair is harder than it may seem. Trust me, I know. Remember Rush? To sum up, Twilight of the Thunder God, Thunder God really impressed me. I felt like that was a strong album, well-written and well-played. It carries with it a huge pedigree from a band that has carved a name out for itself for being the best at what they do. And I owe them a second look. And I plan on going through their catalog as much as possible. But having said that, it's still difficult to look past Death Cult Armageddon as anything less than a complete masterpiece. And because of that, it's getting my vote to move on to the next round. I am the kiss of death, aren't I? I really am the kiss of death. <laughs> yes, and I was so happy you voted for a monomath for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah>. Phil. <laughs> well, you feel really good. Yeah, oh, because wow. it would have been uh it would have been just uh it would have been just you and me, Bell. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Conrad too. Oh, Conrad. Conrad. That's right. Oh, Conrad. Actually. That's right. That's right. I forgot. I almost yeah. Because begrudgingly. Was begrudgingly. begrudgingly. <laughs> but, you know, you did. Wow. Look, I, it was tough for me. They're, look, it was tough. They, they both. Um, the the Viking thing is not. It's not my wheelhouse. It's it's mm. cool, and I felt kind of like really. It's a one trick pony thing for me for them. I think. Uh, but they do it extremely well. But there's mm. really no room. That, to that, that's on part that. of the charm, though, to be able to produce ten fucking albums of that genre, like oh, Rodenstein doing four or five and keeping to that gimmick. They do it's it impressive. better than anybody else in that in that genre. There's no doubt. There's no yeah. doubt about it. You know. Now you are um, limited to your gimmick, but to be able to produce albums within that gimmick, it's impressive. Yeah, yeah. But I wasn't yeah. even tuned into the lyrics. It was the music that just sort of uninteresting and boring for well, me. I, I literally yeah. wasn't reading the lyrics. So well I was I was side, images was of just, like you know yeah, broken yeah, swords just... and cocks all the way through it. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> that's just me. Um a monomath uh, never broken a cock. Oh, really sorry, oh, so. I just don't know how you know that Dave, but all right. Um <laughs> they never mentioned the sword. <laughs> These, I'm um, sure they mentioned swords in their lyrics somewhere. Yeah. Surely. No, I never picked up on that. I would have been laughing if they did. <laughs> the funny thing about this one, though, is that it's two weeks in a row that the top seed has been knocked out. So, yeah. Was Amon Amarth the top seed? No, no, no. DAD, no. Yeah. Oh, but, DAD oh, were the top seed. They got knocked out. Amon Amarth were the second seed. They're knocked out. Oh, wow. The really is going to hate me. Yeah. Sorry, what, guys. What have we got left? So next week... Um, we have Stradivarius Visions going up against Nightwish yes. once. Ah, okay. Okay. Easy. That's cool. Easy. Easy. Don't, don't give anything away, guys. Easy. Come on. Let's. Oh, yeah. oh come on. Away. I'm fucking transparent as hell. It's easy. You are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> That's going to be. I'll justify it, though. I will justify it. I've been thinking about it all week because I knew it was coming up. Yeah. But Stradivarius. Oh. Yeah. Up That's great. It's, a, it's a fucking given. It's easy. Well, I'm going to go into it with uh, an open mind yeah. because uh, and remember, then, you got to judge it on the on the merits of yeah, what it's going. I've been up, thinking so. about it already. It's easy. 
Um, and then it'll be what's up? What does that go up against? Goes up against. Um, sorry, where's the number bracket? Two what else players. is left? So, seven and ten. Um, is it crash diet? Is this the semi Yeah, crash diet. Yeah, crash diet. Oh, shit. Crash diet <laughs> um, is going to go up against what? That's another easy one. Fuck. Team so Mobile Gear. Mobile Gear. <laughs> crash diet. Interesting that one. Um, wow, that's a crazy, a crazy battle. Oh, yeah. I might be joining Dave on that one. I don't know. Uh, hold on, seven. I'll I'll work it out. Seven. Yeah, they got through. I'm sorry, I'm uh, jittery. The screen's jittery. Oh, you stop jittery at the moment. We can only Wait, see I'm the sorry. top of your head though. Yeah. Yeah. No, now you're jittery, jittery again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So crash diet goes up against um Jimmy Bob Gear the week after that. So that's. <laughs> Conrad smoke. <laughs> yeah, and then after that, the win the winner of those two ones <laughs> go through to the fight to fight the winner uh, in a couple of weeks. So we're getting there, folks. So we are three wow. weeks away from the winner. Let's pick the next theme after that. So I'll have to work out that one. Um, mm. We are getting toward the end of things on our Sunday session for the Patreon supporters. You'll get to see us do a TV episode dedicated to the Screaming Jets. Um, with some extra bits and pieces in there, but we're also going to do our Sunday session reviews. We'll be there for Casanova's, 69 Eyes, Danko Jones, Iced Earth, a classic, and the latest or the, the next album in our Symphony X series. Uh, make sure you check us out on television as well every Thursday night at Channel 44, 10.30 p.m. Adelaide time, and then every Saturday night, 10.30 p.m. Melbourne time on Channel 31. You can watch both of those via, you know, your... TV, your online website at ctvplus.org.au or via the CTV Plus app. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun as always to go through these ones. Um, as always, there's links in the description box. If you miss anything, you're tuning in later on. We thank you for taking the time to, you know, sit here with us whenever you join us, whether it's live or, or later on. Um, yeah, links for all the songs are there links for us. So please make sure you find us on your preferred platform and just give us a follow. If you don't want a link, just find, or just look for the hard rock show. You'll find us. We've got the name, uh, locked up on pretty much all the platforms anyway. And, um, Yeah. Next week is going to be interesting. Again, I'll have another round of Who Am I, another round of this, and another round of albums, which will be 1980 next week. Uh, as always, a big thank you to our fantastic sponsors in Squiddy's Scrimpany, Alt Cult, and Rockstar Finance as well. There's a link for them in the description box, so give them a follow too. That'd be greatly appreciated. And uh, we've got a few comments here to go through before we start to wrap things toward the bin. Um, when the Nickelback comment came through from tough michael chomney saying whoa jolly calm down the nickelback comment got you angry <laughs> they're in the same house so, so jolly's got i love nickelback so there we go um michael said i picked twilight of the thunder god however our son uh con parrot banged his head to progenies of the great apocalypse other parrots do not care for either <laughs> and that's how birds do that they get into it um yeah. Sammy says, I love him on a math. Uh, very Uggs of Mikuliart. Oh, yeah, is my favorite track off this album. So there we go. I'm not going to try to cool. pronounce that one. Uh, Sammy said, Ted from I'm on a math came and got drunk in the park with us once near Queen Vic Market. Now, that's a cool story. That's That'd cool. Be fun. Um, Edge Crusher, good to see you. Uh, never listened to either of these albums until today. I enjoyed Demuble Gear, whereas I found I'm on a math quite boring. But it's on my first ever listen to these bands. So there we go. Yeah. That's, that's more for the communal thought there. Dean says, hey, guys, I'm late to the party, but hope you're all well. We are keeping well. Hopefully you are as well. Um, Sammy said to make it easier, track five. That was her favorite track before. Nicole says, Demon Burger for me, but I just like them both. So there we go. Um, Tuff says, I want, to want me to build a ship and go to raid England. It might be a couple of years too late, but what fun it would be. Hell, Odin. Um, yes. <laughs> and Lee says, treason, Conrad, off to Norse hell for you for defying your Viking brethren. <laughs> 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 and Sally said I'm on a math for me. So there we go. I get a bit of a mixed feedback there. Um, before we go to a bin, uh, Dave made sure I was aware of something that I had seen that was just some news that came through yeah. earlier tonight um, from the Voyager camp, which is a band that we have followed very closely over the years. And they, you know, obviously had the recent Eurovision success and all that kind of stuff, along with the fantastic new album too, for the record. But um, Danny uh, put out a post a few hours ago, which is the singer 
from the band saying, Danny here. Oh, hey, everyone. Danny here. Last week, I was dealt with some life-threatening news. I've been diagnosed with cancer that requires immediate treatment. I'm absolutely devastated that we cannot perform on our forthcoming European tour, especially after this incredible Eurovision year we've had. I'm on a strict doctor's orders to not take this lightly, put my health first, and get this sorted so we can be on stage again as soon as possible. This has been an extremely hard decision to make, but one that everyone will hopefully understand. At this stage, the tour will be rescheduled to October 2024, and we'd love fans to keep hold of their tickets where possible, but we understand that if you prefer to request a refund, you can do so from your point of sale. Voyage will perform our last show for a while at America's Cup event in Fremantle, uh, Western Australia, this Sunday, September 24. So come and party with us before I start re- treatment. In the coming weeks, I will focus on my health and my family and ask that everyone please respect our privacy. I truly value and appreciate everyone's support and understanding during this time. I'm surrounded by my incredible bandmates and team who are in navigating all things of Voyager whilst I'm out of action. Love your fierce friend, Danny. So just want to quickly pass on our best wishes from all of us here yes. at the show. Um, speedy recovery. Hopefully that you are through this one as fast and as fully as possible. This is a thing that is not to be taken lightly, so I'm glad you are taking the time to address it, and hopefully it does come out with a much more positive outcome in the very, very near future, and you are back on track in 2024, which is not that far away when you break it all down. So fingers crossed that everything goes well. Please keep everyone in the loop uh, whenever you're ready, willing, and able to do so. Don't feel any pressure otherwise. But yeah, just from all of us, speedy recovery. Hope it all goes exceptionally well. Yes. Um, just want to throw that in before we get out of here. Uh, Michael said, notice this week voting for my top five, not on YouTube, but were on Facebook. Normally votes from both. I've been a bit slack on the YouTube side of things, unfortunately. Uh, it's just been a bit manic with a few things I've had to take care of. Uh, but the social media side of things will hopefully be a bit more smooth and, and uniform across the board. Well, that fucking wind is going off. Um, all right. Uh, Dean says, wow, speedy recover of him and beat the beast. Thinking of him, his band, his friends, and his family. Well said, Dean. Could not have said it better myself. Alrighty, I think that's all the usual stuff to go through. So now it's time to wrap this up and go to the bin. And so let's get Conrad before his jitterbug kills everything off. So let's go to Conrad well, first. What do you for the bin? Oh my god, I uh, haven't right. thought of it. Haven't, uh, yeah, twitching phones. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's valid. That's perfect. <laughs> twitching phones, they suck. Yep. Doing 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 broadcasts on a phone. I want, yep. uh, I want my laptop back. Fingers so crossed. So do we. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's a new one. I'm looking like I'm night looking night. like Max. Currently looking like Max Headroom. <laughs> Got Dude, Max Headroom. Back to the eighties. That is mode. cool. Good yeah. reference. <laughs> oh yeah. wow. All right. From one gremlin bound person to the other one, Jeff. Let's go to your bin next. Okay, uh, yeah, so I look, um, how about getting caught out lying in a video purporting to be the truth? Okay, I'll explain. Um, I watch, uh, I watch, I subscribe to a guy, a fellow Canadian, uh, who makes videos. Yeah, um, his name is he's a nice guy. I mean, I'd love to meet him and everything. Uh, his name is uh, Glenn Fricker, and he's got a channel called Spectre sound studios or smg spectrum media group yep um so he put out a video where he talks about um getting this uh cab he gets like a lot of music gear i don't know if you guys have ever watched his show but he's got a really good show check it out spectrum media group or um spectrum Sa- sound studios smg Yep. And so he gets this, um, he's talking about um, Celestian speakers, right? And how much, you know, they've gone up in price and stuff like that. And so there's a um, a, a company uh, called Toman, and they're out of Germany, and they sell basically music gear. You can buy anything from them, okay? I mean, they're, they're, I've bought some guitars. For Harley Benton is their in-house brand. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of them, but... Pretty cool stuff for very little money. Like I had a guitar from them, Harley Benton, um, and I they ordered it from Germany. Keep in mind, okay, uh, and it was like one hundred and eighty dollars, okay, and it was in my, it had been delivered to my door, like in eight days from Germany, which was pretty damn good. I was I was pretty impressed. 
So he just did a video just a couple of days ago uh, where he ordered a, a, a Harley Benton cab, speaker cab, okay, which has got these Celestian speakers in it. And he made a big deal about how long it took. It took him, unfortunately, in Canada, it took a long time. He ordered it back in mid-July, got it in like the end of August or something, okay? It took a long time. So he makes this video, and he wants to show everybody how great these speakers sound, okay? And, yeah, admittedly, they sound amazing, okay? So he puts this video up. And so he's watching. He's, he has these musicians that basically work for. He's like a record producer guy, and he has these musicians that play uh, for him. And so there's this guy, and he's playing this track. Oh, Conrad's gone. He fun. He bugged out. Um, bye, Conrad. So I'm sorry. This is a long. This is a long one. But I had to explain it because in the video, uh, you watch his band playing through supposedly through this uh celestian speaker that they've got okay that they just got but the in the video the, at the end of it there's a link to another video about toman um the company and uh i click on it and it's about trying to compare other speakers and stuff like that and guess what's in that video a video clip uh, and it was this was done 10 months ago and it's a video clip of the exact same fucking guy playing the exact same song, supposedly through a completely different fucking speaker. And then he used that to say, yeah, this is what it sounds like. Go out and spend your money. Buy it, you know? And I was just like, that, he, he fucking is lying. He's, he's completely lying. Because how the fuck can you have a speaker that you got in August and then have a video that was recorded 10 months ago and have the same fucking clip in it? Didn't make any sense to me. So I call him out on it. And um, I'm sure um, he's either going to have to, other people are going to have to either watch it and know that I'm not bullshitting. Uh, and I hope he gets done for it because he's basically saying, you know, spend money here, but don't spend money over here. And I think that's just shit. So that's my bin. So sorry. In the fucking bin, dude. I like the guy, but that's mm. a shitty, shitty thing to do. Yeah, no, you got to be honest. You got to be truthful. You got to be honest. Yeah. yeah. So, well, thankfully, they're, they're they're not a sponsor of this show, so I can say what the no. fuck I want. <laughs> <laughs> if they were, man, I'd say be honest anyway. It's just how it works. Yeah. yeah. Um, all righty. Let's go to Bell next. Over to you. Okay. All right. So, I like twisties and. Yeah. I like cinnamon okay. donuts. Oh, yep. I know you got. But I don't think the two should be combined. <laughs> agree. I'd agree. But I've got a very curious mind, and so of course, when I see this shit, yep, I'm gonna go and buy it. Right? I, I think it's worth spending a couple of bucks to try new things. Yep. I always try new things. So yeah, I tried these, and they're fucking terrible. So. <laughs> Everyone out there, if you're curious like me, don't bother because they're shit. Not worth it. Thanks Cinnamon for saving us a few bucks, Bill. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, horrible. And they These only come in a party you. bag too. Why can't they sell this shit in like a small bag? Because they don't make money on that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's, yeah, that's probably it. They know that you're going to buy it. You're going to spend a fair bit of money to yeah. do it. And then you're only going to buy it once. So that's it's why they people get people like me that are the yeah. problem. People See, like me. not so, so much, Bill, because Jody tried them and she likes them. I tried them like, nut. Nah, they can go in the bin, but she likes them. Like she got another packet. It's like, what the oh. fuck? No. <laughs> Don't feed yeah, the beast. Just, no, yeah. exactly. No, they're just, just, they're just weird. I actually nice. remember seeing, uh, it was like a few months ago, um, twist, uh, Coles, I saw Twisties like raspberry, oh, okay. like raspberry licorice mm. flavor or something, and I didn't buy them. Um. And I'm, I, I don't regret that because I thought mm -hmm. that's just too going too yeah. far. But I saw these. I thought, nah, might be okay because, you know, I don't mind the whole sweet, salty combo yeah. in, in some ways, like bacon, maple syrup. Well, I don't eat bacon, but yeah, yeah. salty and maple syrup. Well, I used to. Yeah. Um, pineapple on pizza, that kind of thing. That works that's for cool. me. Twist, 
twisties <laughs> and uh, cinnamon donuts do not work. Yeah, no, that can go in the bin. In the bin. Doesn't sound good. Yeah. Is there still cheese in there? No. The, not no, really. no, they don't have twisty flavor. They have yeah. cinnamon donut flavor, but there's it a slight bit like of It's like cardboard with a bit of cinnamon sugar on it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Really not good. Like the, it, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Doesn't work properly. So just anyway, get the normal cheese or, normal, or chicken twisties. Chicken twisties are great. Yeah. They are. Uh, not as good as cheese. Che- like the ratio would be I'll probably buy 10 packets of cheese to one packet of chicken. I'll go the other way. It- <laughs> I love the chicken wow. ones. Wow. No, yeah. stick with cheese, man. Just fucking che- Yeah. <laughs> I can't stand either of them. So that's okay. Well, there we go. We're on the twisty train. Either way, Dave, your bin for this week. Okay, this one's a few weeks old, but I was keeping it. But D. Snyder, I usually like and respect and agree with most of what he says, but he's been a complete cock with his comments about Metallica with their no repeat two concerts in a row. Dude, yeah. if you were in the same position and you could play two concerts, you wouldn't be not doing it. So shut the fuck up. And mm-hmm. honestly, if to to me, metalheads will always study an album and like read the liner notes and know an album back to front. So if they play a deep cut instead of the hits. We're not fucking gold 104 fans. We're metal fans. So if they, if Metallica played Phantom Lord instead of Enter Sandman, I wouldn't be all that unhappy. So shut the fuck up and get in the bin. Yeah. Fair enough. He's been a bit of a tear lately, which he normally is, but yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you know, he's a cock. Yeah. yeah. yeah fuck it. Um, fuck again. off. Play some deeper cuts. I'll be happy. Yeah. I would be happy too. I've been saying it a few times. Look, my bin tonight is. Well, there's going to be two now. The wind. <laughs> um, one, one is slow as fuck drivers because me doing DoorDash deliveries around town, I've just found everything under the sun. Like, you yep. have no idea. I, I know that a, pain, dude. I, know I should pain. set up a fucking... No, man, it's worse. I should set up a dash cam in this town, man. It's fucking crazy. Some of people just should not have fucking licenses. I tell you what. I, I, not that it's... Like, Melbourne's probably more dangerous. Here, it's just fucking annoying. So I was just yep. like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Pay attention to the road and not everything else around you. Especially when, because where we are, it's like a really local road. And it used to be 100k an hour to get here. They dropped it to 90 because the road's so fucking broken up. Now they can't quite resurface it. So it's dropped it to 90k an hour. But when you get people that know the local shortcuts, but don't take the local speed, they go down to like 60k an hour in a 90 to 100k an hour zone. It's like, you can fuck off in the bin. Um, yeah. The other that's one... Caesar? Yeah, that's Caesar. That's Caesar. Um, the other one, obviously, is the fucking wind because it's doing everything to my setup. It's fucking with the dogs. So the wind <laughs> can fuck off and go in the bin tonight because that just came out of nowhere. There was no forecast. Yeah. That. Even looking at the weather report before, it's like gusting of like 11k an hour. That's fucking a lot more than that right now. Um, <laughs> so I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, but I am in the middle of nowhere, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Um, but yeah, that's crazy about- spring weather. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is storm season up here now. So the storm season is yeah. kicking in. So we're getting, like, we call them scuds here. Like, little random scuds come through and just dump fucking a bunch of water and then they fuck scuds. off again. It's like, where'd that come from? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Just out of nowhere, they come and hit us and then they, they fuck off again after that. So it's just like, yeah, they don't last for long. They just dump a shitload of water and then just go away again. It's different up here. Getting used to it slowly, but it's all part of the fun. Um, what do we got here? We've got some comments here that Dean said, uh, Speed of Code said that before. Uh, what do we got here? So when it came to the uh, chopping up of Conrad's screen, it was, might be interference in your broken sword, Conrad. Oh, he, God. Um, no. no. <laughs> and Michael said, I thought Max Hedron before Conrad, spot on. There we go. Uh, Lee said, coming soon, Bell's Mystery Shopper Channel. <laughs> 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 That'd be good. Um, Tough says, wagon wheels are too small in the fucking bin with them. I yeah. agree. They're getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. Each year. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, shrinkflation can fuck off. Shrinkflation can fuck yeah. off. Yep. Um, Rowan says computers in the bin. Considering your world of work, that's a challenge. Um, mm. Dean says, "What do we got? Um, the bin losing Paul from Screaming Jets, another legend and musician, unexpectedly. They were about to head on tour to spot the new album. The legend gone too soon. Godspeed from the legend. Yes, could not agree more. Yep. Yeah. Um, we did cover that yeah. before you jumped in, I think." Um, Michael's Andrew, I thought you'd be making yaoi jerky right now, not eating junk food. I'm not eating, I'm delivering it. That's all. Um, <laughs> I don't eat a lot of junk food. We're, we're making moonshine right now. 
that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> it's happening, bubbling away up there. Um, Vinny says, in the bin for me, the same oh, is lame monsters in horror movies. The boogeyman is my reference. It's like visiting a brothel and paying for a hug. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great analogy. I'm going to steal that one. Um, that's that kinky is great. shit, man. That is great. Um, Tough says, also make icy poles like Buffalo Bill and splits 45 cents bin inflation. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Um, Nicole says, no one here. I warned you about the drivers. Yeah, you did, Nicole. I completely agree. Uh, unfortunately, I'm learning the hard way. Uh, Michael says, don't want to think about vegan jerky. Can't handle that thought. Well, <laughs> there we go. And Sally says, thanks, guys. Well, that's it, though, for us for now. Um, unless there's anything anyone else wants to quickly fire off before we get out of here, we're going to wrap this up. Anything? Anyone? All good? No. Yeah. No, my headphones no. are dying, so this is good timing. All right. Cool, cool. Well, on that note, we'll see you all again, same time and place uh, next week as always. I'll quickly hear Jolly says, COVID in the bin for me. Stay COVID free. Thanks, guys, for a good night. You're welcome. Hopefully, you're feeling better Get soon. Get well soon, Jolly. And yes, Sammy says, how come we moved up here? We moved up here to be closer to Jody's family, long story short. Um, we'd done a lot of time in Melbourne, and it was time for – the kids are growing up, moved out, so it was just time to make a change. We had an opportunity that was too good to pass up, so I moved to Queensland to uh, make a, a change and be closer to Jody's family. That's basically what it was. Now that we've got all this set up, it wasn't really – can do this anywhere. So we got people overseas, interstate, and all sorts of stuff, so it all worked. So we decided to have a shot at it and see what happens. Um, Vinny says, stay safe. You two out there. Michael says, hopefully next week, Carlton Collingwood Grand Final go Blues. Well, go Pies for me, but – We'll see. Um, be, it, that'll be a fucking AFL dream come true, I think. Sammy says, thumbs up. Dean says, stay safe, be kind, be you. Likewise to you, our good friend there. And Nicole says, thanks all. On that note, we'll wrap it up. We'll see you all again, same time and place, next week. Until then, I'm Andrew. I'm Bill. I'm Jeff. I'm Dave. As always, folks, you know what to do. Drink up. Drink up. <laughs> and rock on. Rock on. <laughs>